Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on April 13th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Um, I'd like the um, Capital Committee to um, be able to um, open their meeting. And we believe the Finance Committee is posted, so they may open a meeting, um, although we're not 100% sure on that. So we're going to limit comment. All okay. right, so uh, I'm Jack Davey, and I'm calling the Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting for April 13th, 2021, uh, to order at 6.03 uh, p.m. Fox ahead of mine. This is Julie Chalfant. I'm calling the <laughs> meeting to order for April 13th, 2021 at, I thought it was 6.02. We'll call it 6.03 p.m. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, so, Jack. Why don't you go ahead and um, uh, present the capital committee? First okay, one, so public hearing first. Yes. Public public hearing first? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, geez, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor, you got to read all the yes. stuff. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I will read a couple of things. So, um, just uh, for the select board board of health meeting, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Uh, remote connection um, information is located at the town website down by the calendar on the right. You can click on our meeting, click on um, the, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting. Any one of those meetings will give you a link to a Zoom meeting, which is here. So if you're watching on TV and want to do that, you can do that. Or you can call in if you have comments at 312-626-6799. Uh, the uh, meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And uh, just mute if you're not speaking. You can do that by hitting star six and wait to speak until others are finished. Do you want me to read the public hearing or is that something Jack Davies would read? The notice? No, go ahead, Trevor. Read the select. Okay. Open the hearing. Yep. Town, Town of Deerfield public hearing notice capital improvement plan FY22 to FY2026. The select board of the Town of Deerfield will hold the public hearing on April 13th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in accordance with the Town of Deerfield bylaws, Chapter 10, Article 4, Section 10 through 18, capital program in the main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. All the same. Um, you know, information about meetings held remotely is uh, there. The phone numbers are the same. The ID is the same. Should you need a passcode, it's 570012. So the capital plan has been available for inspection since April 1st, uh, between nine and four in the four year in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. So welcome. I'll call the, meet the hearing open. So uh, Trevor, is the, is the capital project plan spreadsheet is that available for people to see for this meeting or sure is it um yeah i can show some way that it can be of course yep. that it can be put up so that people can kind of follow along uh let me see about that while you guys start i'm gonna see about all right i'll i'll just start and um so just just uh just be you know before we get into the the nitty-gritty just to uh, Excuse me, do you want me to share my screen, Trevor? Oh, if you have it handy, sure, that would be great. The, um, the Excel one? Yes. 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 Sorry. No, it's okay. It's in the packet. I got it. Great. Perfect. Can you see it? Oh, yep. there we yes. go. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, wait, that's the second page. You have to have the first page. There we yeah, go. there you go. Any way to enlarge you. that? Anyone to enlarge or like minimize or something? Wait, you're picky. I no. know, right? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Perfect. 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 So just just be just to get started, you know, for for people that maybe are are attending and um, uh, may not know exactly what the capital improvement planning committee does, um, we're a purely advisory board, uh, which um, considers uh, debates and ultimately makes a recommendation on uh, capital projects, which are presented to us 
by uh, town departments and, and the select board. And um, things were a little bit different this year, but typically uh, by, de by December 1st, uh, town departments, uh, the select board present us with written proposals for capital projects, which might be construction projects, might be pieces of equipment, might be studies, and we investigate and we uh, debate and ultimately make a recommendation. So we don't have any authority to spend any money. We don't uh, actually propose any projects. We're, we're purely an, an advisory board and we uh, make recommendations. Um, so this year uh, we had something like 26 um, capital requests, which was a lot. And we kind of boiled that down to 18 because there were some that we really didn't have enough information and really needed to be moved into future years. Um, so if you, if you look at this spreadsheet, um, uh, on the left-hand column, it's organized by department. And then in the next column is uh, fiscal year 2021 approvals. And the third column is fiscal year 2022 requests. And then uh, the, the next column is, uh, did we approve or recommend the project? And the amount that we recommended. And then this year we came up with um, uh, another column, um, which we had never done before, we actually prioritize the projects. So you'll see in that uh, priorities, uh, the, uh, the vote that we took to prioritize projects. Um, so um, if we start at the top, uh, the, the first item that we, we considered well, the first, the first items were, uh, had to do with the 350th celebration, and uh, there are proposals for uh, the restoration of a, um, of a large birthday cake um, and a display case to display um, memorabilia from the town. And um, it, was a little, it was a little unclear exactly if these, these requests were going to come to fruition, and uh, correct me, Carolyn, if I'm wrong, but but there's also some fundraising going on, so the the dollar amounts were um, a little bit vague. So what we did is we uh, pushed those requests into fiscal year 2023. That is correct. Um, so the the next item uh, has to do with the capital uh, stabilization fund. A few years ago, the town established a capital stabilization fund with a goal of having a million dollars in it. At this point, we're at $850,000. Um, and we did recommend adding two, $250,000 uh, to the capital stabilization fund this year. However, we prioritized that at number 16 out of 18. Uh, the, the next set of requests are from the Deerfield Elementary School. The Deerfield Elementary School over the last few years has been doing uh, renovations to the elementary school building. They've been very good about consistently asking for relatively small amounts of money. Uh, this year's request was uh, for the uh, restroom re renovations was $15,300, which we recommended and we prioritize that at number seven. And then uh, their second request was to replace flooring, replace carpeting with vinyl flooring. And the request was for $21,200, which we also recommended. And uh, we prioritize that at number eight. So then moving to uh, the next requests were from Frontier Regional School for, um, uh, uh, duck cleaning in the gymnasium and the auditorium and also replacement of the auditorium curtain. Um, and the, the request was, the Deerfield share of the request is $15,242. Uh, the, the total project is, is larger than that. I 
I don't have at my fingertips exactly how much the total project was. But in any case, Deerfield's share was 15,242, which we did recommend, but we put that at uh, priority number 18. Um, <clears throat> the next set of, uh, of requests have to do with um, uh, the, well, it's on the spreadsheet, it's, it's labeled as MVP grant match climate resiliency. And it has to do with a uh, request to uh, upgrade the Leary lot in an environmentally friendly way. Um, the, there is a potential grant contribution from the state of, of $96,000. Um, we, we did table that request and we moved it into fiscal year 2023, um, mainly because the project is is still kind of in, in a formula, in, in a in, still forming itself. And it's also, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the grant situation is a little bit unclear too. That's yeah. true, Jack. That's true. Absolutely. Yep. Um, <clears throat> the, the next item is, um, is labeled MVP grant match WWTP, which is wastewater treatment plant. And this is actually, it should actually be specified that it's for uh, the outflow pipe from the South Deerfield wastewater plant that goes from the plant into the river. Mm -hmm. And it, there is um, some concern about the resiliency of that outflow pipe and the estimated cost of replacing it is $1 million. But again, this is another project which is a little bit unformed. And um, so we moved it into uh, 2023. Um, that, we'll that was because it was, it was a, a complete replacement. And if you really go out and look at it, it's really right at the river. You know, where it exits to the river. So the part of the river is what needs to be. Yes, yes. Replaced. It's only a partial right. replacement. And, uh, you know, our intention is to work with um, Natural Resource and Conservation Service and do some kind of um, grant situation. So, mm. but again, so, that's not enough information. Yeah, and I think similar to the um, Leary lot and other climate resiliency stuff, you know, we, we were hoping for certain grant things that the projects still need to happen, but they may fall into different grants. You know, if there's, if there's other um, grant opportunities coming through infrastructure bills or any other kind of um, available funds, we, you know, these projects still want to happen like the Leary lot for economic development and, and the sewer work there's, as I'll get into much later, there's, there's quite a bit of work to do there. So we just are kind of like anywhere we see an opportunity to save the town money and go after something. We still want to do these projects, but but Jack is right. They're just not baked in the cake well enough right now right. to go after. All right, so then the, the uh, next item, um, the next project which was presented to us uh, has to do with a potential purchase of the old Cumberland Farms building. And again, this is, uh, this is another, another project that I guess everybody in town would like to see that Cumberland Farms building, something happen to it. Um, however, um, Cumberland Farms has been uh, incommunicado. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we moved that into um, fiscal year 2023. And I, I, just wanna, I just wanna comment that, you know, one question that, that always comes up about, about this is, is the the cost of environmental cleanup, and there is no there is there is no way that anyone in town, in right. town government, is considering purchasing that property without um, uh, Cumberland Farms being responsible for any environmental cleanup. So so anyway, that that that's another project that's um, that's on the horizon, but it's very unformed. So it's been moved into twenty twenty three. Uh, the, the next uh, set of uh, um, proposals have to do with, um, well, the, the first proposal has to do with um, 
under municipal offices is the town common. It's not really in the municipal offices, but in any case, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, town common design and improvements. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in but fiscal year 2020, forty thousand dollars was voted by town meeting for potential construction um, and upgrades of the common. In 2021, an additional $40,000 was voted for design work, which is now pretty much complete. Mm -hmm. And so the, re and the request this year was for $55,000, which again was, was kind of a placeholder uh, towards future construction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the committee felt that um, we should show a, a, a total amount on the next line of the estimate to um, ultimately upgrade the common. And the figure that we, that uh, Trevor provided us with was $195,000. And uh, I guess now we have some, in, we have uh, an estimate that's, that's quite a bit higher than that. <laughs> Well, and then it came down again. <laughs> so uh, I'll just speak to this real quick, Jack. So you're right. We didn't we didn't have any idea kind of what we were going to spend, what we we're going to do. And all during this time of kind of building the capital plan, we've been working with Berkshire Design to develop a design and then get a probable cost. Um, so finally, just literally today uh, or the other day, I got a bid, um, which was inaccurate. It was just the way that Excel added everything up. It came up to like $500,000. It was wrong. So it's actually around $300,000. I've just sent that to Jeff Upton and Jack um, to kind of fill in for later times. Um, but yeah, this, this was a project that isn't quite ready to go out on yet. Uh, um, eventually, we'll get a $300,000 um, budget in there. And then we just got to figure out, you know, what year we can complete it. Does it, you know, the town still needs to go through hearings and public input and all of that. So um, you should have a current one now. But yeah, we're not ready on that. Yeah, right. So the so the fifty five thousand dollar request, our committee uh, tabled that, yeah. and it's it's just going to move into a into a future year. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the next request uh, is a request from the town office for a new file server, which is thirty five thousand dollars, and our committee did recommend that. Uh, at 35,000 and we prioritize it at number 13. Um, the next item has to do with uh, paving the municipal offices and the police department, but, but not just that, also paving an, an entrance behind the senior center to the area of the ball fields. The, um, the, the idea is to increase the safety of traffic flow around the municipal offices and the police department, especially at times when uh, there, are, there are games and a lot of parents and a lot of traffic around the building. Um, so the, the request was for $140,000. Uh, the committee did recommend it and prioritize it at number 15. Um, the, the next item has to do with municipal offices repair, office repairs, and there's a, a GRLA architects um, uh, assessment of now of the municipal offices, and there are a number of items that they feel need to be corrected or improved, and um, this year's request was for $60,000. This would actually be a ongoing project. And so if you, if you look to, you, to the right-hand columns in, on the spreadsheet, there's, um, additional, there's gonna be additional requests uh, in the coming years. This year's requests of 60,000, uh, we did recommend and we prioritize it at number 10. The next item is a request for, from the, the uh, building inspections department for permitting software that would allow um, contractors to apply, apply for uh, building, ins uh, uh, building permits online and also inspections online. So it would streamline the um, activities of the building inspection department. We thought that was a, an excellent idea. We did recommend it. 
Um, we prioritize it at number 11 and uh, 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 Casey's looking into grants uh, to pay for it. Um, the next item uh, has to do with uh, archiving of building inspections. Currently, um, the, the, the building inspections are on paper and have to be searched manually, which um, consumes a lot of time. And um, so the, the, the proposal is to uh, digitize the building inspection archives and the, the, the building inspection documents ongoing. Uh, the request was for $35,000, which we did recommend. And uh, however, we did prioritize it at number 17. Um, the, the next uh, request is for um, a website upgrade or, con well, it says website conversion. Really, it's a website upgrade to make the town's website easier to use um, and more intuitive. Um, we did recommend that $48,000 and we prioritize it at number 12. The next department is the police department. Um, the police department has, a, has had an ongoing problem with the HVA system in um, the department, especially in the summer. The, um, the HVA system on really hot days is unable to keep up with uh, demand. It um, sometimes freezes up and uh, temperatures in the department um, rise to 90 degrees, uh, which makes it very difficult for the officers to work. Um, there was, there was a, the initial request talked about um, maybe doing mini splits as a sort of a band-aid approach, but the committee felt that really we needed to, the town needed to hire a engineering firm to design a new system that actually works and uh, would be a permanent fix rather than, um, rather than trying to, to uh, put a Band-Aid on the problem. So the request is um, for $100,000, uh, which we did recommend and we prioritize it at number six. Um, okay, so now could we, could we move the, the uh, spreadsheet up a little, up, yeah, okay, good, great. Um, so the next requests have to do with uh, public works and um, the largest one is, the largest request is for $5,724,000 for ongoing uh, South Deerfield sewer plant upgrades. Um, this, is a, this is an ongoing project. Um, We've been talking about it for years. We, uh, the town did, uh, the town meeting did uh, authorize borrowing $19 million to upgrade the plant. Um, and uh, this is um, uh, this, this year's request for the actual, actual projects uh, in the coming year. Um, so it's $5,724,000. We did recommend it and we prioritize it at number one because, you know, frankly, it just has to be done. Um, there was, there was, someone did make a suggestion, I think from the finance committee that the, that this, that, 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 that the wastewater treatment plant upgrades maybe appear on the spreadsheet in a, in a different position because it, it, it inflates the total requests for the year up to seven, over $7 million. And, and really the wastewater treatment plant project is, is an ongoing. Um, right. And the, the actual requests for this year uh, were a million four hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars So so anyway, that's that's just a kind of a housekeeping note. True. And I can speak to that more if anybody has questions sure. and I'll talk to it later on. Yep. Um, the next request uh, is from the highway department for a piece of equipment called the a Wacker Newson multi-purpose loader. This is a piece of machinery which um, it, it it's kind of starts out as a compact loader, 
Um, and then it comes with attachments, um, including a, a power sweeper, a V plow. Um, I'm drawing a blank. There's another. There's another attachment. A snow thrower. Oh, snow, a snow thrower, thrower. Yes, a large snow thrower for uh, clearing snow from the sidewalks. Um, it's replacing a um, a machine that a similar machine that is uh, I think dates back to 2002, and it which is now inoperable. Um, and uh, our committee did recommend this purchase. It's $105,000 and we, re we uh, prioritize it at number five. Uh, it's really a piece of machinery that the highway department really has to have. It's, it's, um, uh, it's kind of an essential piece of equipment. It's a lot of money, but um, it's, a, it's a piece of equipment that, that, that really, I, I don't know how they could, I don't know what they would do without it. I, um, so, uh, Jack, you yes. might want to mention the use. It, it actually clears the sidewalks of the snow and also brushes sidewalks off. Right. Just so people are aware of the actual it, use. It's used in the summer on uh, cons road construction projects to sweep to sweep the roadway. Um, and they, you know the lo the the small loader may be useful in uh, in areas where the where the a, a full full size loader is uh, uh, difficult to get into, so it's really a, uh, it's really a versatile machine. Um, Jack, um, yes. Kevin has a comment. Can Kevin make a comment? Sure. I was going to have Kevin um, do it at the end, um, Jennifer. Okay. Because Jack's on a roll here. Okie doke, go for uh, it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we're, we're kind of getting to the end here. Uh oh, we lost our sheet. Oh, okay, there, there you is. go. Okay. Um, okay, so the next request is from the highway department uh, for uh, the roadside mower. The roadside mower is, um, um, uh, on loan from Eversource, well, not really on loan, it's, it's a lease from Eversource, and um, uh, it's $26,000, the request is $26,000 for this year, and after this year, we've been, we've been making that $26,000 payment for a number of years, and after this year, we will own the machine. Uh, Eversource makes the payment, we just handle it. It actually is not our payment. That's a, okay. That's a, that's a good point. I'm sorry. Which which skews your seven million dollars by another twenty six thousand. Right. <laughs> I know. This so, is through. It's just a reimbursement. Um, yeah. Kevin handles the management of it. But after this year, this is the last year. We own it. We don't have to share it. Correct. Um, the the next request is for uh, sidewalk repairs in the downtown area. It's for $503,000. Um, the committee did recommend it, uh, specifying asphalt rather than concrete because it was less expensive. Um, and we prioritized that at number 14. Um, uh, the the um, next requests have to do with uh, the South County Emergency Medical Service or SCEMS. Uh, they requested $25,000 to enlarge their parking lot to make it easier to turn the ambulances around. Um, the uh, request is for $25,000. This is to be paid out of their rental fund. Uh, so we did recommend that at number three on the priority list. <clears throat> they also requested a exhaust system for um, the ambulances uh, currently the ambulances sometimes have to run inside the building, um, filling the building with diesel fumes, which is a health hazard. And uh, so the, the um, request was for $30,000 to uh, install an exhaust system. And we did recommend that. Again, it's to be uh, paid for with SCEMS uh, rental funds. Uh, then the, the last item uh, has to do with the senior center and senior center um, needs assessment and feasibility. 
the request is for $42,500, um, which uh, is Deerfield share with, um, is it Sunderland and Waitley? Sunderland and Waitley, correct? Yes. Um, and it, this is actually a multi-part request. The first part is a needs assessment survey, uh, which is $35,000 total Deerfield share 17.5. The needs assessment is like a professional survey of the residents of the three towns who will be surveyed to determine what services and what programs they want to see in a revitalized senior center. Um, it, it's, a, it's a professionally designed survey to, um, in other words, it doesn't just ask people, hey, what do you think the senior center needs? It's a professionally designed survey to um, ask people what kind of services that senior centers normally provide do townspeople in, in our three towns actually want. So I learned that um, some senior centers have swimming pools. So I think that'll, that will be one of the questions. Do we want a swimming pool in our, our new senior center? Um, so, this, so Deerfield share of the feasibility of the, of the needs assessment is $17,500. And uh, the using the information that's gathered from citizens, this part two is a feasibility study to de determine the feasibility of rehabbing the existing senior center um, for a new senior center. And the, uh, the Request assumes that the cost of doing this feasibility study is fifty thousand dollars, and Deerfield share would be twenty five thousand. So, uh, the total request is forty two five, and uh, we did recommend it, and we prioritized it at number nine. So that's the that's the request for this year. Um, just going to note that. Um, the, the, the last item or the, the last uh, category is the Tilton Library upgrade project, which um, apparently we're getting close to um, being approved for the state grant. Um, the total cost of that project is $8 million. It, it's shown in uh, fiscal year 2023. Um, that we, we're, we're gonna have a meeting with the library committee in a few weeks um, and we'll see what progress uh, they've been making on that. So that's, um, that's my, my presentation. Kevin, you wanted to add uh, some comments about the Wacker Newson machine? Yeah, if I could, and, and uh, actually a very nice job uh, presentation of uh, what we've got there in front of us. And it was well put together, did a nice job. Um, the Wacker, uh, you know, we, we've got an opportunity to, I looked at what we had for money and I recognize the fact that we've got like slim to no money as far as capital is concerned. Um, because of what this piece of machinery is that we have that is actually down right now, um, because it's, it has the ability to be $20,675.90 worth of trade-in. Um, we did a repair to it last week for just under $1,000 to get it running again. And then I told them to park it. Um, so that way, at least it's worth something as a trade-in. Um, with that being said, we went and looked even further. So, okay, if we can't afford the $105,000, well, what would it be if we went with a multi-municipal lease purchase option? Um, basically, it works out to five equal payments. An advance of 2.99% at $19,923.30 a year um, for a total of five years, which basically works out to $1,000 a year in um, uh, interest. Again, if, if I don't get the opportunity to replace this piece of equipment, I will be requesting $25,000 for rentals for uh, July 1st because I, I need to have something to get our work done. I need to have something to take care of our snow come fall time. 
Um, it's it is like I said, it's a critical critical piece of equipment, and I've been fortunate that I've been able to borrow a piece of equipment here and there to get us by. But I mean, uh, I can't utilize their equipment like we utilize our own. Um, multiple days in a row, you know, I was able to borrow for like a day and an hour. Um, so that's where we're at with that machine. Like I said, it's it's down right now. It, it is a critical piece of equipment, but I just wanted to make sure that you had the the knowledge of the the ability to only spend twenty thousand dollars. Granted, it's over the next five years, but I'm not asking for 105 all at once, which hopefully would bring me a little bit closer up in the uh, um, a lower number per se. Kevin, um, were you, I, I noticed um, you were able to sweep on North Main this week, and um, were you able to borrow Sunderland's unit for that? And that is correct. It out and see how it went. I, I saw it was a Wacker Newsome and looked like that, it did that, a good job. And actually, it's it's the exact same unit as what That's that. What I thought what yep. we're looking at so actually it's kind of and i shouldn't say good in a way but it is kind of good that we've been been able to utilize this piece of equipment a little bit because now a the the, the um the crew has been um Familiar. trained on how to utilize this because this is it is a it's very technical when you get inside you can't just get in and just go it's not a turnkey and go it's um it's very technical to actually run this piece of equipment um to the point that we actually had to use a owner's manual to try and figure out how to get one of the hydraulics to work. It was, it was push A, push B, push the lightning button, and then push the light button, and then it works. <laughs> it's like, and, and that's where you get the, the multi-function wiring that, that they put in everything now. So that you have to push multiple buttons to get the same thing to happen. It's a long story, but anyway, um, yeah, we've been able to utilize it and it's, and it's worked out very well for us. Um, but again, you know, he's in the middle of trying to do his cleanup too. So sure. You know, Sunderland has been gracious enough to allow us to borrow it, but you know, I don't want to wear out my welcome either. Right. No, Thank glad you, you had a chance to try it. I, Lily, I see your hand up. But so before um, I, uh, uh, we do go to public comment. Um, do we have any other updates, Trevor? Do you have an update uh, on the sewer? Uh, do yeah. you, I mean, I, I can I could speak for hours on that, but I think it's important to <laughs> update everybody as to where we're at. Right. I mean, that's um, this sewer project has been one of the largest projects the town's done in many, many years um, is going to do. So um, Dave Prickett is on with us tonight as well. Uh, I asked him to kind of sit in <clears throat> and help us do this. Um, I'm gonna just share kind of a, hit a little bit of quick history on this and let Dave speak uh, as well. Um, if I can share my screen, I am just going to grab, uh, well, bear with me one sec while I prep for this. Um, what are you looking for? Do you, can I help you? Is it in the packet? Uh, no, no, that's okay. I'll grab this real quick and um, bear with me one second. Um, large project and okay, are you looking, are you okay, looking for got a good it. Good sheet, Trevor. I got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me just get back to my meeting here. Open that. Share that, and here we go. So um, this is a, a memo. Um, so our bids came back on the 31st of March for, the, for our first phase of the project. So back in 2019, we asked the residents to support $19 million to repair the South Deerfield plant in a couple of phases. Um, we still have old Deerfield to work on and a lot more stuff to do. But uh, first was to deal with our workhorse and get that up, up to speed with um, headworks and uh, changing the way we do the um, clarification before it, you know, before it goes out to the river and how we treat the water and all that. Um, so uh, we, we, uh, a year ago or so, we got a bit, um, a loan and a grant from USDA to do the first phase of the project. We were hoping it was going to come in around just under 9 million. It's a little, it's about a million over that uh, when we, and, uh, for the, for the base bid. And then uh, just based on the meetings we've been having all year and watching other towns and how they're going out to bid, we decided to break out um, alternates and pull some projects in that we were going to do in phase two into phase one because it just fit with the project better. Like with the new Headworks building, we were going to do a watering system in phase two. It's really important to have it in phase one. So we moved some projects around between the two phases. Um, so our first phase grew a little bit more than we were hoping for. 
Um, the bids came back. Um, we've got two bids, one from Waterline uh, for 12 million. This, this is for the bid plus the alternates, 12 million, 625. Um, and RH White came in at 13 million, 681. Um, and then we had, uh, let's see if I can roll this a little bit here. Um, so uh, we, had, we had the construction budget, you know, the base bids, we had these alternates, which was the plant watering system, the grit removal system, a secondary clarifier. We broke those out because we weren't sure how the bids were gonna come out. The market has just been, I mean, if you've had any projects done at your house, you realize you can't get a contractor, materials are three times what they were. Um, everything's kind of really hard, hard bidding environment. So um, we broke out these alternates to make sure we could still move through with a project. But just looking at this, we felt it was important now to do these, these projects um, and these alternates because looking at the cost of doing an alt, um, what, some of these alternates later on, it's just cost prohibitive to do them later. The clarifier alone, I think, um, these were the, let me just scroll down this. So these were the, the base bids and then the alternates that were in here. Let me just see if I can go this way, just to work a little bit. Um, alternate one, the cost of alternate one, uh, alternate two, secondary clarifier, disinfectant, and a scum well mixing system. So um, we had a minimum of 5% contingency. We've increased that because the USDA is requesting at about 11% contingency, especially in this market. Um, so we have a delta of what we kind of expected for a bid and, and with all the alternates in, we're probably about 4.6, I'll have Dave kind of get into the numbers, but we're about 4.6 million more that we're gonna spend on phase one um, and we're gonna lighten up phase two. So we're still gonna stay between that $19 million appropriation. Um, there were considerations to do on this project. So um, the economies of scale, the, we asked the, the bidder, you know, the low bidder, what would it cost if we do the clarifier at a later date? It's about 1.6 million now to put in the secondary clarifier. It would cost an additional million to do it at a later date because the holes are already dug, the equipment's there. Um, they've they've um, worked out a deal to get some space around the property to, to store equipment and materials. So it just makes sense to kind of roll it into that. This is, um, this is a little bit of what we would, you know, scenarios award the base bid only um, with the contingencies. Um, and then, you know, the cost to defer it was 100, 133,000 a year to defer that. We'd award all of them um, or rebid the whole project, which we don't think is smart because I just, I don't see bids getting um, any cheaper as we go further, you know, especially if an infrastructure bill comes out, uh, the cost of steel right now. I mean, the, the low bidder is holding his price on rebar and that kind of stuff right now. It, he's got to hold his price for 30 days. We don't have much time to move on this. Um, and then, so it, this memo, and I can make this public for people to go through and, and take a look at the different options that go through here. I don't want to talk all night because we've done a lot of work on this, but just Deferring this stuff would total would cost quite a bit of money in, in the long run, probably you know 1.4. Um, so I, I think um, I would let. We had another meeting today to talk about financing. Uh, we discussed. Um, we've been reaching out to USDA to see if they could help us any further. They think they could increase their um, their loan uh, another 2.2 million. So we would probably need to come up with 2.4 uh, as a match, which we can do. It's within our scope of, um, you know, borrowing that we got uh, authority for. Um, so we'd like to move in that direction. I'd like to, you know, bring Kevin in to see if he wants to touch base on any of this, probably speak a little bit more clearer than me on it. Uh, Dave, are you with us? I'm here. Okay, great. You want um, me to jump in? Yeah, anything I missed here? Or were, anything you'd like me to share? No, I think I think you did a really good job capturing. And I would say just kind of, you know, a couple of quick things is one is the residents of Deerfield entrusted the team to upgrade the South Deerfield plant to the tune of $19 million. Um, to add on to what Trevor said, you know, phase one is often is the case. There's a little bit of scope creep. Things pull into phase one as you start peeling the onion and looking at a 40, 50 year old plant, there were things that we realized during this phase. 
that they just weren't going to last or they had to be done in order to make the new equipment work, like the headworks. Um, we accommodated those design uh, changes without any change to the scope. Um, we have a good plan to use the remaining funds, even despite the, the overrun of the phase one allocation. Um, we have a good plan to balance the $19 million total cost. So for the residents, you know, the net cost doesn't change. Um, I think the biggest thing, and you, you, know, you can look at some of the little nuances of doing a clarifier later, digging a hole 20 feet deep in Hatfield or Hatfield or Deerfield or anywhere in this area. It's literally practically on the line, but mm -hmm. um, the soil conditions are atrocious. So as Trevor mentioned, when this crater is developed uh, at the South Deerfield plant, it'd be a heck of a lot more efficient to build the clarifier while the, while the hole is open. Um, kind of bigger picture, and James touched on this right on this page right here that, that the audience is looking at is interest rates are so favorable right now that even though some of the construction cost, construction challenges with materials and labor and a very narrow pool of qualified treatment plant contractors, if the interest rates were even to go up by half a percent, it's almost $100,000 more per year, just, just per year of you know, the, the mortgage payment paying it back. So um, securing this initial project, um, the downside is we came in over where we wanted to be for the phase one budget. The upside is we get two thirds, three quarters of the work done at the South Deerfield plant in the first phase, um, leaving a pretty small lift for, uh, for phase two. So I think you hit the nail on the head, Trevor, and James and I are here for any questions that the, uh, that the group might want to entertain this evening. Hey, thank you. Um, before we, uh, so did anyone want to have, uh, Lily? was your question related to the sewer treatment plant? Okay, um, I'll just hold off on the minute. Does anyone have any questions of Dave before um, they leave for the evening? Okay, thank you. Um, moving on, Casey, did you have an update on our, um, on this list? That you wanted I did. Was that the website? I think you were, we were going to remove the website um, conversion and put it in as operating budget. Yes. I think you're on, I think you're on mute, Casey. I unmuted her. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I was having trouble with my, the buttons. So I have, we can remove the $48,000 for the website and put that into the contracted services budget. We can also reduce the MVP project request of $384,000 to approximately $50,000 by removing the park or the paving piece at the Leary lot because we're not just we're just not ready yet. And I can reduce the server costs to $11,000. I did get the quote and it, I sent it out to Mark Brennan, who's also on the capital improvement planning committee. And he and I just haven't had a chance to connect, but I did get it. And so that, that reduces some of the stress in some of those budgets, but it, they aren't substantial amounts of money, but I did want to tell everybody that I had gotten some updates. Okay, great. Um, Anything else? Okay, Lily, your question. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> you can take my hand down. Um, yes, so my question relates to the senior center line item. I totally uh, grasp the needs assessment. You won't get any financial partners without one done professionally. But my question is, um, according to the buildings assessment team, and I think um, Julie's here tonight, um, out of all the buildings, the senior center, the cost of restoration is almost four times any other building. It is $449 a square foot estimate. And I just would, I'm just raising my hand because I think in a way the cart is going before the horse. You do in the process, you do a needs assessment that defines what you're going to build and there will be no swimming pool in that building that's for sure um so i just i just would say that um that i i i think it's a little 
um, we're a little ahead of ourselves on that, especially, I know everybody loves that building and they wanna preserve it, but I don't think we should jump straight to saying, um, we're gonna be budgeting that for the, the senior center because we don't know what that senior center needs to look like because we have not said what it's going to do. That's I all I wanted to say. Yeah, I think we're all looking for direction on this. Um, that was part of the feasibility question, Lily. was to, so first you do the needs assessment, then you do a feasibility on how you could use that space. But that, but what I'm, the, what I'm questioning is we are presupposing we're going to use that building. Oh, I would no. say you do a needs assessment no. and you get a design and you figure out based on, then you look at the buildings and stuff. That's in the projects, the senior living communities that I have been a part of building, that is usually the way it goes. I think that was what we were doing, right? Anybody else? Yeah, I think we're, well. We're not presupposing that we're gonna use that building. Right. We're doing yeah. an assessment survey, then we're gonna think about what we're gonna do. It may be that building, it may be a different building and it may be an entirely new building. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I understood it. I, no. I'm sorry. I thought it was specifically using the senior center and, and that, that that's how I understood that line item. It's the, the senior center as an entity, not as a building. Thank right. you. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. I apologize. No I, um, normally what we do is we take this under consideration for a little bit or we have a pretty clear idea what we want to do. But um, I, I was hoping to table this recommendation. Um, this is just my suggestion for um, a couple of weeks until we decide, you know, till we have more concrete information on our budget, because um, I, it's important to do as much as we can. Uh, and maybe this is a year that we don't have any money. So then we dip into our stabilization. I know we were trying to build it up, but, you know, the police HVA system, I, you know, that is a really, we won't meet, we won't meet um, our code for the, the inspection of the cells that will have impact and will not get, um, they will not pass if it is not fixed. And um, it's very uncomfortable for officers as well as being not safe. And so potentially this could be maybe a um, uh, given the guidelines, maybe this, we can do this with COVID money because it is, um, you know, HVAC. HVAC and it's also, you know, some kind of filtration and it's, it's health. There's mold and mildew in that place and we've got to fix it. So um, rather than, I mean, I, Trevor and Dave, do you, I mean, how do you feel about this? So your, your thoughts would be to hold on voting the capital plan, you mean? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. because I, I mean, I want to, I want to support, it, and it's very small money. I certainly want to support um, the elementary schools and all that kind right. of stuff. Uh, their little projects as a continuation, but um, I, I'm, I'm hesitant. To, I mean, we're going to have to decide what's really needful mm -hmm. and what is is not. So, um, but I want to well, wait a little bit so we have more information, maybe. So a couple of questions I have, just one, I'd like to hear if there's any other public comment and then two, you know, before we close the hearing and then to um, Casey, what kind of timeline are we looking at? You know, as far, I know town meetings pushed off till June 12th, but I know that there's timelines of how soon it's got to be voted and all that kind of thing. So uh, the CIPC finished their work. The plan had to be presented <clears throat> within 60 days of town meeting which it has yeah which it has so where I think Carolyn's consideration and and I have to say we're still fidgeting with the budgets because I just found out today that we may have a Smith Vogue student that we weren't counting on so right. we may have some fluctuations in the omnibus budgets which then impact what we have for any free cash and at this point we don't have any free cash if everyone wants to leave money on the table so yeah since we still have some fluctuation, my comment to the board would we, perhaps we take it under advisement and then circle back around with the finance committee and yeah. capital. Now that we have a few updates, but circle back around and plan the, the funding usage. And so I did 
Jack, to your point and to Ken's point a couple of meetings ago at Capitol, I did look through the bylaw and you know, I think Capital Finance and the Select Board, since they all have responsibility in, in evaluating financial positions that the town takes, um, it might be worthwhile if Capital's willing to participate to come back to that table. Mm. But there is some allowance for review of the funding sources. And and this and truthfully, this morning. Or, I mean, this afternoon's meeting um, about the ARPA 21 is the money that we're getting from the government, you know, the next COVID money. Um, it's supposed to be uh, the broad, there's a broad set of rules that still have to be developed, but it is supposed to be for um, revenue replacement, which we have to meet with Brenda on, and it would be based on our 2019 revenues. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be some extra money there, but it does include, um, economic, um, any kind of economic development um, and, and consequences. So you could, based on my, my impression with the meeting is we could do the Leary lot, something mm -hmm. like that, that would encourage economic development with Berkshire Brewing and right. the street businesses and part of the common we could pick up maybe, um, yeah. you know, with our electric charging station and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that's kind of exciting. And so that yeah. would be huge. Um, the other thing that is really important is that um, we're going to get the half the money in the next month, uh, within the next month, so sometime in mid-May, uh, if your towns are over 50,000 people, which is not us, you get a direct payment. So the direct payment will be like really quick. But the rest of us have to wait until the state gets the money, then the state will hand it out, but it's still estimated within May. So that becomes money this year, this fiscal year. And then we get the second half in the next fiscal year. And, the, and, it, and we have till the end of um, that fiscal year to, to spend it. So it yeah. does straddle two fiscal years. Um, so we have some ability to do some changes there. Um, so it was, and you can also, you can't use it to lower taxes or mm -hmm. to use or, or to make your pension payments, but you can use it for um, some infrastructure, including um, sewer. So that's kind of exciting as well because we have, you know, massive pipe replacement mm -hmm. that I well, think could, um, you know, that's creeping wanted, up. Yeah, I wanted to share that information with this committee as well. Um, I don't know if this is the time, but um, after well, maybe no, after we, we don't close really the hearing, know. We don't have well, the rules yet, but no, I'm just saying what we're what we're facing for uh, additional oh, I'm sewer. Sorry. Yes, yeah. Yes. So and maybe after we close the hearing before everybody takes off, I can give an update on what I know about that. But so that's why I've kind of just would like us to um, table our decisions and and just close the hearing and then make a and decision then, in a couple of weeks or months. Yeah, and then invite everybody back to participate. Yeah. I, I mean, do people feel comfortable with that? I just have a question. Sure, sure, sure Jeff. Jeff. Question, just very quickly. So, am I to assume that at the moment here, the Capital Improvement Committee presented their Capital uh, FY 2022 Capital Projects Plan, and we've had the public meeting. And that is the plan that is being represented and will be recorded. And at that point, from this point forward, uh, it'll be amended if need be. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think we'd have to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and we were... I just want to... Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, just want to caution, and I understand this is kind of a quirky year. There's no question about it. Just want to caution to uh, say that you just make you may want to check with town council and make sure that that's not an issue this year as far as amending uh, before okay. the annual town meeting. Just just to make sure that we're doing everything right here. And and I don't have any problem because some of the points that were brought up are very good points. There's no question about it. And another thing I know what got a lot on the table now but in the future i still would recommend highly recommend that that 60 day uh time period 
be changed in, in the capital improvement bylaw because we're two months out and we've run into this. This is like the second year in a row since we've had this language that your capital improvement committee team is trying to put together a five-year plan and yet budget and, and money's numbers aren't, aren't determined yet. So, so it, you know, this is, the committee's working very hard, mm -hmm. but it'd be nice if we could fine tune this a little bit better in accordance with the select board and the finance committee also. Yeah. Just, just a, a thought. Well, I, I agree, Jeff, that the 60 days really needs to be shortened up because it's just, it's, it's too far out. There's still too many question marks, 60 right. days. And it's yeah. not just related to COVID issues and, right. COVID no. and all the mess that we have, because it's very difficult. Um, I mean, we're just never going to have enough money again to be able to do as much as we want. So I, you know, it's always going to be a little bit of a trade trading back and forth. Um, okay. So, um, we're running a little behind. If nobody feels any issues here, I'd like to close the hearing. Take a no, motion. No other public comments. Yeah. Okay. Trevor, can you make a motion to close the hearing? Sure. I make a motion to close the uh, public hearing of the capital improvement plan for FY 2022 and to 2026. April from second. Thank, thank you, Dave. You, Dave. Um, Thank you very, very much, Capital Improvement Committee, and thank you, Finance Committee and Capital Improvement Committee, both for showing up tonight. Um, You're welcome. All those, those in favor? favor? Yeah. Hi, Trevor. Jack, you did an excellent job. Thanks, Jeff. Yes. So could somebody on the CIPC make a motion to adjourn? Uh, one, I make one that second. motion. Well, oh, we wait. haven't finished our- we haven't finished Oh, you our, haven't finished? <laughs> Dave, has to, Dave has to roll call here. Oh, OK, sorry. Dave? Yep. Okay. All right. I Carolyn Ness. I also make a commit. I also make a motion for the capital improvement committee to adjourn as well. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Carolyn Ness, um, aye. Jeff Upton that seconded. Yes. Yes. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise. Uh, who else is here? Denise, Denise Mason, what was that? What was that vote? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all of us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Jack. Thank yes. you. And so Jeff. Do, so do you want to discuss uh, sewer pipe before everybody runs off or do we have anything else we have to do? Uh, anyway? Why don't you just give us an overview? Um, okay. Uh, it's so depressing, but just get it done. Okay. So bear with me a second. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not it. While Trevor is um, doing that, I just want to throw out for the finance committee that we have neither a posted more meeting nor a quorum, so we're not going to close because we never officially opened. Oh, you know, Thank you, Julie. Uh, let's see here, one moment. Um, Why you're looking so, it up, Trevor? Can you? What's uh, that? While you're looking that up, uh, yep. maybe we should. Uh, speak with the capital improvement and have them update their spreadsheet to take anything that's borrowed money and out of that for the capital, because that's not something they really have to approve because it's already been approved by town meeting. So that 5.7 million, because that 7.1 million is gonna scare a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's not really- uh... Well, my, my understanding, David, is that we, we had to vote. We had to vote it, yeah. Because, because the the nineteen million, the town town meeting um, authorized the town to borrow nineteen million dollars, but the the five point seven million is the actual expenditure. So, but I just want to. But I think we could clarify the spread. We could clarify the spreadsheet so that we don't have seven a total of seven million. Yeah, just because it's kind of misleading. So that it's uh, um, yeah. part of that 19 million, one, that it's part of the debt exclusion, two. Right. You know, it's borrowed money, it's not new money. Right. Right. So we'll I see think, if we can, I we'll think, see if we can fit, come think, up with a way to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Well, I think you need to uh, address that at the annual town meeting. 
because according to your bylaw, as Jack said, we have to vote the actual project, the expenditure for the actual project. And that's why you see it on the capital plan. I hear what you're saying, David, and, and I agree to an extent, but because of the bylaw, the way it's written, we had to have it on the capital plan. So yeah. I think we have to somehow, some way, shape and form, address that at the annual town meeting so people understand it. Yeah. Okay, Trevor, go okay. ahead. So um, aside from the monster project we have down by the river in South Deerfield, um, by, by the Sunderland Bridge, um, that's our, our main workhorse plant. We have another plant in Old Deerfield um, that is in probably worse shape, but doesn't doesn't wind up doing as much you know intake as, as the other other plants. So you know a couple of things we've been working on on the, these ideas is we had the 19 million to work on phase you know phase one and two at the South Deerfield plant. Then we were going to go to three phase three and four, which was rehabbing the old Deerfield plant. Um, another idea came up of well, do we mothball that plant, turn it into a force main and pump it to South Deerfield? Because South Deerfield will be up to speed and can take all the flows from the whole town. But so we're looking, we have um, a project working right now to find out what would that cost? Where does it have to go? How much would that be? The other project the town has been working on over the last year or so is um, CMOM, which is camera uh, every pipe in the town of our collection system in South Deerfield and Old Deerfield. We're just finishing up, just finished up camera of all our pipes and manholes in our whole collection system. Um, and several things kind of came up, you know, that were, were, were really tough. So this, um, this uh, green screen, a little square is, is the Old Deerfield plant. You can see the river here. We're each one of these oh. green dots is a, is a, um, a manhole. And then the pipes are kind of showing direction of flow and then condition. So uh, this is Albany Road coming through the DA campus, uh, going up Little, me little uh, Meadow Road along the uh, soccer field and, and, and then out to the plant. This pipe in purple and red right here is, is horrendous. You can see the pictures that are here, root balls, this is a hole, um, you know, massive hole in the clay pipe. Some of the pipe has been lined, but is misaligned, um, cracks. Uh, you know, th there's areas where the pipe is, is no longer circular. It's sagging and collapsing. Um, so some of this pipe in red needs to be cut, ditched, you know, and completely replaced. And other parts of the pipe can be lined where they run, say, a sock in from one wheel, one manhole to the other and then steam it and you wind up making a new fiberglass pipe inside there. Um, the clay actually then supports it. It's not really a pipe anymore, but the, the clay kind of backs it up. Um, so that's the most economical way to do a project. Um, uh, you can see that these areas are misaligned um, and we've had major blockage in a lot of these areas from, you know, if the roots are coming in, you've got also infiltration. We had some areas where, you know, a fire host of, of groundwater is coming into our pipes. And so we're paying to treat all that. Um, so, so we have um, the most dire area emergency need for backup and replacement is right behind uh, DA where all the collection comes in from most everything in, in Old Deerfield to our plant. Um, that needs to get happening right away. Another section is going up um, Pine Nook Road up through to Eagle Brook. That, that's another section where the pipes are completely misaligned. They're just, because of the, the rough terrain of when they put them in, you know, they, they kind of put a pipe where it could. They didn't blast as much as they should have. And, you know, pipes are misaligned. They're all in this bad condition too. So we have, um, let's see, we have about, um, th this top section right here, I don't know if you can see my screen, um, is, uh, is not the picture anymore. It's just a kind of a spreadsheet. So this is the cost to change the pipes uh, just behind DA to the plant. So Albany Road and Little Metal Road. Um, this is changing the pipe. So some of them are cure in place piping and some are open cut replacement. You can see the open cuts a whole lot more money, um, but, but needs to be done. So there's about a three quarters of a million of work in that section. Uh, and then these are all the manholes that need to get done, whether they're, you know, just epoxy lining or 
open cut replacement. Um, so that kind of section from kind of DA back to the plant is about just under a million, 927. It needs to happen very fast uh, or, or fairly soon. Um, and then the rest of this is all of old Deerfield, what's needed for um, cure in place lining or open cut replacement. You see a lot of the open cut is on Pine Nook. And then there's some, other, a lot of the other places are, are mainly just cure in place. And then again, the uh, manholes that go along with them, uh, lining in place or open cut replacement. So we have, you know, total about 3.1 million dollars in pipe lining replacement and manhole work in Old Deerfield alone. We probably have, I don't have numbers on this yet. We probably have about five million in South Deerfield. So. Um, South Deerfield is much bigger, but it's actually in much better condition than Old Deerfield. Old Deerfield's much smaller, but in worse condition. So I don't, again, I don't have numbers for South Deerfield yet. And um, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is I know the water department is gonna be changing pipes on, I think, um, Graves and Eastern and Cross in the next coming year. Uh, so they'll be digging up the road. <clears throat> I, from what I understand now, you've got a lay pipe sewer and water need to be at least 10 feet apart from each other um and it used to be you could line them in the same ditch but they're probably going to be on both sides of, you know different sides of the road so um but i'm just thinking before we go and pave after the piping is done in south deerfield uh for the water department we should probably look at doing whatever work that needs to be done in the sewer on that area before we pave those roads as well so i won't have numbers on that for a little bit but just Kevin? wanted to kind of bring you guys up to speed. I think Kevin has a comment, Trevor. Sure. Yeah, when it comes to, uh, they're not doing anything on Graves, they're not doing anything on Cross Street. They're only gonna be replacing Eastern Ave. Um, oh, as far as, and that was the first place that I asked DPC to give me um, what their opinion was of the pipes. So oh. with that being said, um, regardless, I still took that entire loop of Graves, Cross and Eastern and asked what, what our conditions are. I have one section on Grave Street that needs an open cut and allegedly the rest of it will be able to be uh, lined in place. Great. Um, they are, again, they're not gonna be doing any of the water mains for either of those places uh, of Cross Street or Grave Street. Okay. Um, but I have already put in through my chapter 90 requests for recent of grave or excuse me resurfacing of eastern ave after they're done with their work okay okay great so just uh, trying to team up that work so yep. it you know exactly so we're not we're not digging up something as soon as we finish paving it i, I agree right. and, and yeah. the only other part I, i'd like to actually it's mm -hmm. two things um i was there for a lot of this this um uh, camera work and uh, Trevor's right, it's scary. Uh, there's a large section behind DA why this thing hasn't collapsed is beyond me. Um, historically, you might see a crack across the ceiling that might go, you know, three, four feet. Uh, we've got some areas in there where the cracks go 53, 58, almost 60 feet long, um, which is unheard of. You know, the, the third picture down the left-hand side you showed of the, of the photos, um, the pipe is no longer round. It's more like, a, it's not even egg-shaped. It's even getting flatter than that. Yeah, that, that's, it's, it's sketchy. Um, and I'll be honest with you, why this section right here is not collapsed yet is beyond me. Mm. It's, it's, we're, we're on very borrowed time there. Um, as far as all of our lines, we haven't quite finished everything. Um, they were able to get everything they could with the truck. Right. But there's a lot of the Hill and Dale that they're going to have to take all this equipment and hump it through the woods because when you think about it, you've got that 21, 21 inch interceptor that starts at um, basically by the Polish club and that runs all the way down through over by the state yard across 116 into Waitley and then over into uh, eventually into the wastewater treatment plant and all of that line still has to be cameraed um, okay. and again that's it's going to be very difficult to get that a because of the flows and yep. b because of the the uh, location of the manholes and Dave, Dave was saying he needed to give that camera truck kind of a a lift <laughs> put it up on four by fours just so it's because it's so deep he needs to lift it up and so he's got stuff on order to kind of make sure that the camera can get high enough that it's not underwater and 
to get that right. pipe. Right, yep. right. Yeah, he's, he's he's actually ordering a different truck okay. with a different system. Um, from my understanding, you know, he's he's because what he's running right now is the Q's, which is a decent unit, but he's looking at something that that would be better. You know, they they found yep. what they've got, which works very good, but they see where they need something else. And those cameras yep. are very expensive. My understanding, those mm -hmm. cameras are about twenty grand a piece. Yeah, just for the camera head. Okay, thank so you. That's okay. kind of kind of you know just wanted to bring everybody up to speed is you know when we're talking about projects you you know I drove by Kevin the other day and his face was pretty long and I worried it was about a finance committee meeting but then he, I called him and he said no I'm up to look at, and this was the pipe he was going up to look at and these things just kind of show up you know they either show up by a backup and if we have a backup here it's backing up into all of DA which is going to be a nightmare um, or you know they're backing up into homes and basements and all and and um, you know, this is the work we knew we had to deal with um, and, you know, was in that 30, 36 million dollar, you know, original budget we were looking at. But we've been trying to break this up in piecemeal to be able to keep the rates somewhat affordable and but tackle this stuff. And um, so these projects just kind of come along and we've, we've got to address them where we can. And, and we're trying to look, you know, we're also looking to USDA to get um, a grant and a loan for this project. Um, if we can work with um, uh, with DEP and get you know get a, a letter talking about the condition that forcing us to do this, then we can, uh, as we did with a sewer project, we can get a little bit more grant versus loan with USDA. We have a little more leverage if DEP is behind us, and they've worked with us in the past on this stuff. So we're trying every angle that we can to look for grants and ways to kind of save the ratepayers and taxpayers money but these kind of projects we just have to do so well i'm i'm hoping that we can do this under uh, the 1035 that joe cumberford filed and mm -hmm. then also because that's up to a million and yep. then there's also the infrastructure um you know plan that's coming out and everybody and his brother will be of course trying yes. to get money yep. um but i think it would be very helpful yeah. Anyway, um, we're so running I'll end here, but... behind, so yep. we need to Sorry. move on just a little bit here. Um, thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda, and I'm sorry we're so late. I see Kim. We're um, having Treehouse um, Brewing come and do a uh, just a hello, and what we're welcoming him, and um, we're so wicked excited, and uh, we'd love to hear what your plans are overall. So. Kim, I think I see you, and um, oh, I see Don Dubendorf too. Thank you. Right. Uh, thanks, uh, Carolyn, for that introduction. Uh, of course, Kimberly uh, Galitsky is with me, and Mark Bornstein is also with me on behalf of Treehouse. Thank you. Uh, as you know, we're we're uh, Treehouse has acquired the uh, former location of Channing Beat out on five and ten. Uh, it is a gorgeous site. 40 plus acres, uh, a, a building of, of some size that fits very nicely on 40 acres. It's 107,000 square feet. It's an absolutely gorgeous building and uh, Treehouse couldn't be more excited than to be coming to Deerfield. We are before the planning board and the ZBA this month. The planning board for site plan review uh, the site plan review is fairly limited in scope because we're, we're uh, applying simply for a phase one approval. Phase one only means a, the attachment of a portico of 51 by 51 square feet on the north end of the property. Most of your audience who had vaccinations will remember that northernmost building as the place where those vaccinations occurred in town. Uh, over the last period of time. So, so it is, everything else is largely uh, uh, without impact to the, to the, uh, the yard, the grounds and the building itself. Uh, we've, we've done traffic analysis. We've done work on the impacts of phase one. Phase one is straightforwardly, uh, we have, uh, two pieces of use, one in the most northerly building and then in the most southerly building. In the most southerly building, we'll be, we'll be installing a small brewery function. In the most northerly building will be warehouse coolers and um, 
a, a capacity to serve uh, customers to come pick up uh, uh, the product. Treehouse does a remarkable job of controlling um, that activity on site. All of its uh, all of its selling activity is done on the web. There is no exchange of money on site with respect to its customers. They come in, they <clears throat> check in with traffic attendants, they pick up their order that's already been made at uh, through the web site, and then they move off. So we have a number of ways to manage traffic both on site and off site. Uh, we spent some time with John Pachorek uh, about those activities as well, and he's on board. We have good traffic analytic work that we've supplied uh, the, the planning board and the ZBA. The other piece we're asking from the ZB or from the planning board is uh, two technical waivers. One is to, uh, because it's such a mature site, we didn't want to have to count every tree in excess of 10 inch calipers on site. There are too many of them. So we asked to waive that. And because of the size of the site, again, it's 40 plus acres, we, we wanted to increase the scale to allow more accurate uh, presentation. When you, when you make it smaller scale, the, the plans become unreadable. So those are, that's the relief we're looking for from the planning board. It's narrowed to that first phase. To the ZBA, we're looking for three characteristics of relief. One, we're looking for a, a, a special permit for use under your bylaw, you have something called a major commercial project. And it, it's permitted by special permit and it allows as component uses within that overall category, any non-residential or non-agricultural use that is otherwise allowed, i.e. by right or allowable, i.e. by special permit under your bylaw. And so we have listed in our application a series of, of uses that we will include from manufacturing in the brewery or distillery piece to uh, warehouse functions, to office functions, to restaurant functions, et cetera. So we plan a full build out over three phases, but we wanna be permitted as to those uses in all three phases by uh, by special permit from the planning board or from the ZBA. <clears throat> the, the, again, phase one is simply the uh, uh, sale of product on site and the brewery function. Phases two and three will come later. We will ask as a, a portion of the decision that the ZBA condition its approval of the special permit requiring us to return to the planning board at the initiation of each phase. So we can't commence a phase two or a phase through three unless we come back, because there will be different impacts as we build out the location or build out the uses in the location. The other piece we're asking for, for relief from, from special or for special permit from the ZBA is for signage. Uh, the building is 183, 180 plus or minus feet from the roadway. Uh, we'll, we'll replace a marquee sign where the existing Channing Beach sign is and we'll make it bigger. Uh, we're asking for relief uh, uh, for the size limitations due to that exaggerated setback from the road. Same with the freestanding sign. It's about four times your required setback. So we're asking it to be a little larger as well. And then the last piece is that the most southerly building, the building that refers to itself as the Winter Garden, it has that uh, extraordinary uh, solarium, if you will, with plants growing in it to the rest. It is 56 plus feet high. The maximum permitted under your bylaw is 35 feet. It's a protected non-conforming structure. I'm sorry. And do you have any of the pictures for the board to see? As we do, yeah, we do. Mark has them, you can bring them up. Yep. Okay, so while you're talking, you can- I'm see. happy to do that, Jennifer. Happy to do it. Great, right, thank you. So the last piece is we, we will be changing the use of that building and under your bylaw, a change of use to a non-conforming structure requires a special permit. Okay, 
And that's where we're putting that brewery function in phase one. So that's the nature of the relief. Maybe Mark, you could bring this up. These are the aerial views of the site. You can see our, uh, how we nestle ourselves between um, the railroad and five and 10. To the bottom uh, right of your screen will be the phase one area in building A, and it shows where the portico will be located. There will be a cooler, uh, some office uses and, and uh, laboratory uses and warehouse space in, in that piece of it. The other piece in phase one, and this is the portico here, it'll accommodate six vehicles. So there, are 200, there are 218 parking spaces on site currently. Uh, our phase one use will require uh, approximately 40 uh, because we only have 20, uh, 20 employees. Yes, Jennifer. I was just going to say, just point out the color of what phase one is, and then you can go to the next screen with the parking that you're talking about. Just so you can see that it's um, very minimal for phase one. That's, that's the location in building A. Oh, building A here. There you go. On the right side of your screen. And then there's a small portion in building C. You can see it in the first floor of building C where the brewery function will be located. Thank you. Again, no planned exterior changes to the site except for the portico. And that, that disturbs about, uh, I think somewhere around 9,500 square feet, which is below your stormwater management thresholds of concern and, and shouldn't be a concern given the size of this lot. So that's, that's, that's an overview of where we're at. We've uh, worked hard on the application. It, 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 looks, it looks like uh, a collection of Shakespearean plays. It's uh, quite wordy and lengthy with lots of pictures and the rest. We've spent time talking to water, uh, sewer departments and fire departments about and, and uh, police about uh, uh, the impacts and th there are any concerns they might have. Uh, all of those four departments in town are quite comfortable with the capacity of water and sewer uh, to, to manage uh, what we intend. So I'm, I'm trying to be respectful, uh, Madam Chair, with your time tonight. So I don't want to go on forever. Do you have questions of us, of Kim and Mark and I? Well, haven't been, I, I certainly am aware, um, haven't been at every single clinic that we've had at Treehouse and the wonderful donation of the space for our clinics. Um, we've had over 750 people in and out of that location with um, not any problem whatsoever. And at one time there was almost 300 employees at Channing Beat when it was going full time. So um, I'm, I'm really glad that you have addressed the traffic concerns, but. Um, I'm truly not too worried about those concerns at the, at the moment. Yeah. And, um, Kim, did you want to say anything? That we're super excited to be, uh, you know, in Western Massachusetts and Deerfield has been great. Um, you know, we've met some of our neighbors, you know, Gary at BBC and whatnot, and, you know, we're just making friends. Uh, so no, we're just happy to be there. Thank you. Uh, I'm really excited. Is there any, would you like to make any other comments, anybody? Oh, I just want to point out that the basically what Don's going after for uh, special zoning and uh, to the ZBA is basically what I had at Deerfield Plastics for that facility mm -hmm. for alterations that had to go there because our towers were over 60 feet high. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not something new to the town. No, and it's pre existing as well. So. Yeah. Just we, we're, we're excited. Um, we're excited about it and look forward to, um, we'll be with the planning board on the 26th of this month and then the zoning board of appeals on the 29th. Yes, Jennifer. Um, maybe you can show some pictures of the signage because that's also part of the special permit. So okay. we're happy to do that. And it, it won't surprise anybody that the content of the sign uh, speaks to Treehouse Brewing Company. So. Okay. That shows you the freestanding sign. It's in the same location as the existing freestanding sign. 
It mm -hmm. complies with height, and then this is the marquee sign. Uh, it is, it complies otherwise, but for size. There were two size limitations in your bylaw. One is 8% of the wall on which it's located. It meets, the marquee sign meets that requirement. Uh, but there's also a square footage limitation, and it does not meet that one. So we're asking for permission to have a bigger sign. As you all know, this one faces north. This does not face the road. Right. Uh, so you see this when you are coming south on 5 and 10 in the far lane. Uh, the other one is <clears throat> that you see the single side. It meets height requirements. Uh, it's simply a, a larger uh, sign than is otherwise permitted except by special permit and we're looking we're looking to get that size largely because of the distances from the road go back to the previous picture um over to the left hand side uh is where the portico would go no no the actually the, the oh, portico is behind right. is behind us here oh sorry that's, to the left is the is the entrance way to the property yeah, the portico is off the warehouse. Right, we're waiting it out for vaccination. And it's already impervious surface already. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't we don't anticipate any uh, stormwater drainage impacts. We have sufficient on-site uh, uh, linear distances to accommodate uh, the traffic volumes. You spoke to 300 employees in the past and uh, 750 plus people for vaccination. We expect we'll be able to handle all of those and meet your bylaw requirements for traffic impacts as well. So I think we're in very good shape and we're excited to move forward. Thank you. We're excited to have you. Look forward to the meetings. Thank you. Is there any comments, anybody? Yeah. Debbie. Uh, welcome. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yeah, so glad yeah. you're here. Um, thank you for the good neighbors that you already are and, um, and for, for offering your use of space for the, the vaccination clinics, for the storage of school equipment. I mean, it's just, you know, you've, you've already made yourselves uh, wonderful neighbors and members of the community, and, and uh, we're, we're thrilled that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. It's really our pleasure. We, we, we're enjoying it so far. We're grateful. Okay. Well, thank you. Lily, did you want to say something? I would just second the exactly what Deb Shriver just said. I was just gonna say, um, having I worked at the vaccination clinic, I was impressed with the size of the space. I'd never been in there before, but there were we had absolutely no problems with traffic at all. And um just thank you and Welcome, and I can't wait to see that place revitalized and being mm -hmm. such an important part of our community again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Well, all right. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry Have you had to night. wait. Oh, I really apologize. No, no, no. Need, no need for apologies. Well, at least, at least now you know what our sewer system looks like. <laughs> and, 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 uh, it's in serious need of help, Trevor. Yes, it is. I'll pray for you, all right? Thank you. Yeah, you can help us hustle some money. I'm down with <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, have a great night. Good night, Thanks, good. Good night Thanks, Thank Thank you, you, everybody. Okay. Next um, on the yeah. agenda is uh, select board announcements. Um, yeah, I closed the hearing, Carolyn. Oh, no, we are. I thought we already closed it. Okay. But, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we didn't have. Yep. Yeah, we just we we've moved on. Um, select board announcements. I, the major thing was the ARPA twenty one. I um, that was a very good meeting. I'm very encouraged. We know we're going to get between one point two and one point four million dollars, so that's going to have a huge impact on us. Um, and I'm excited because um, I think it's going to be an easy argument to. Um, you know, try to do the Leary lot in our downtown area a little bit as an encouragement for our economic development with Berkshire Brew and the, and the incoming of Treehouse. This is certainly going to make, um, have, have positive impact anyway. So that was pretty exciting. 
um, and, and to know that there was some infrastructure help in this process too. And again, you know, the sewer is eaten up hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, but this one, you know, there could be something little. Um, okay, Board of Health. Um, everyone is, I'm sure, aware that Johnson & Johnson um, is on hold. There were out of the 6.8 million doses that have been administered, there's six cases where there was blood clots in women age 18 to 42. So um, it's on hold for further investigation at the moment. Um, so please still keep trying to get Moderna will be available and Pfizer vaccines. Mm -hmm. The UK variant is, is clearly more contagious, up to 70% more contagious and um, it's significantly more serious in the sense of hospitalizations and, and death. So, um, and what is really awful is one in five cases now are children under 18. Mm -hmm. And um, as older people are getting vaccinated, it's really, and kids are going back to school, it's really been serious. So CDC is now doing a big study on um, kids and the impact on kids. And we've just really, as a community, we've had a huge spike. Yes. And, um, it's, it's very serious. We cannot, we cannot um, slack off here. People have to wear masks, they have to social distance, and we have to be serious still for at least another two or three months and, and, so we and get more and, vaccination. And every week, uh, we, you know, we, we have a new um, public health nurse that comes on, does, does our contact tracing, and we get a report every week. And of course, we get an email every time there's a case. And Deerfield is struggling. I mean, I, I look at all the other communities, Deerfield is um, much higher. So, you know, just this week alone, I think we had 13 cases that we're following. Now, they could be in the same household. And um, But I just, um, I hate being at the top of that leader list. We do have a lot more people than other towns. Uh, we have a lot more going on with, you know, schools and um, you know, we're a business hub, so um, we're, we're bound to be higher than the others, but just please do everything you can possible, but just don't let your guard down. I know the weather's warm and people are out and it's good to be outside, but just protect yourself when you're around people or if you're seeing other people, even if they're vaccinated, you know, you can still get this COVID um, virus, even if you're vaccinated. It's just that you're, you know, hopefully you're not going to be um, on respirator and all that. So you can still pass it. So just please be careful. Um, we just want to see that number come down. We're, you know, um, we we're doing very well in town as far as vaccinations, mm -hmm. triad, senior center, our police department, everybody is working together to try to get people signed up. There's a lot more vaccine coming in through Big Y, CVS, Walgreens, that's direct from the federal government. Um, it's fairly flat for pu local public health, but mm -hmm. you know, the, there are appointments out there. So if you are, if you are eligible this week, 55 and over or one medical condition, please, please contact somebody if you are not able to sign up. Um, next, uh, on April 19th, it is open to everybody. Our plan is to try to have at least two big, large clinics, whether it's a, a tree house or drive through, it depends on availability of vaccine. And, um, but we're gonna have at least two big ones in South County and that for that will be open for everyone. And so we're gonna work really hard and then we'll break down into some smaller clinics, um, you know, so that it's more convenient for people, but over the summer, but I'm hoping at least get two more in um, pretty soon when everybody is eligible, so. Mm -hmm. Hang in there, try to get as done as you can and, and, and seek help, okay? We, people are available to help. We have a great group of volunteers and, and like I said, our police department, everybody's pulling together. So please, please be careful. Okay, sorry about spending time on that. It seems like we're broken records, but mm -hmm. it just, it's so serious. We gotta keep the schools safe. We gotta keep the schools open. All right. Um, Trevor, do you want to just talk about um, the go over the bid recommendation for approval? Sure. Um, a little bit again. I think yeah. people are a little bit confused. <laughs> it's confusing. It's a lot of work. It's so, hard to follow. Um, it's hard yeah, to follow. So just know that there's been a really dedicated group of people um, 
you know, looking at this from finance committee, you know, our, our board, Kevin, Keith, who runs the plant, um, Barb and Brenda are, are with us in meetings. And we've been working this project for two years or more, three years. Um, we got a bid that was higher than we wanted. Um, we still think it's vital to get this stuff going. It's not going to be any cheaper the longer we wait. Um, we still think we can do the project in the uh, 19 million that we have allotted. Um, we're just juggling around the, the scope of the project from phase one to phase two or phase two to phase one, um, just so that we can get, get this project going. We have a wonderful uh, contractor, our low bidder is Waterline Industries, who uh, did the clarifier project for us, the emergency clarifier uh, replacement last year for us. They were phenomenal to work with. They were great. Um, and they've already, you know, struck a deal with the, the neighbor in the field so that they can use part of that property. So we don't have to truck all the, the fill and stuff that they're digging out, you know, up to the pickle factory lot and you and waste, you know, space there uh, during these projects. So they really thought, you know, hard about what, how to keep everything down there and um, most efficient as possible. So we want to get the Headworks project going. We want to get um, the secondary clarifier in, do the alternates, get rid of chlorine so we have a safe um, environment to treat with UV light instead of chlorine. It's much better for the environment, much safer for our employees, um, everybody involved. So, um, and then we will come back and rework phase two uh, to get the um, air, um, the aeration tanks up to speed and change from those big energy electricity sucking blowers that are on the top to a more bubble system, um, just a lot less energy, a lot better system. We can, you know, those blowers suck more energy than anything else in this town on top of the air aerators. Um, so hopefully in phase two, we can do a bubble system. It's just so much more energy efficient. We can get oxygen all the way to the bottom of the tank. So um, just a lot of good improvements that'll make a big difference for many years to come. Um, again, the, the bid was higher than we wanted. We still feel like it's the most important thing to do. We're, we're spending um, in this phase an additional f about $4 million. We'll be um, 2.2 million will be a loan from USDA. They're going to restructure their loan. We'll have two loans with them to close at the end. So they're going after more money to support Deerfield. And then we are going to go out and bond the other 2.4 million um, for the project. And um, again, all this will roll into that 40, 40 year loan at the end of the project. And um, we just think it's really important to get moving on it, even though it's larger than we wanted. Um, it's just going to get larger as we wait. So um, I, I don't know. I would make a motion to approve the bid and move forward with um, Waterline Industries and. Uh, I don't know if I have that in front of me. Yes, I do. So um, we would approve to, I would make a motion to approve the total um, base bid plus alternates at, um, I've just got to adjust this a little bit from this other memo. Hang on one sec. I'll just double check and make sure I have the right uh, numbers. Cause I, bear with me a moment. <clears throat> check my email because I got an email on a new rate structure here. File. Where's the cash flow? Here we go. This is it. Yeah. So I would I would make a motion to to award the bid for Waterline Industries uh, Corporation for a total base bid of twelve million six twenty five five thirty two. Yeah, but don't you want to include the contingency, Trevor? So uh, I I do, but that's uh, I've got to award the base bid because that was the bid. The contingency and money that we're going to do after the fact is. Um, has to do with financing, but it's not included oh, oh, in this oh, bid. You don't have to. You don't have to do the contingency in the original bid. 
Correct, because we do okay. have, okay. we already have funding in place to do that and other funding we will get in place to do that. But the base bid is really all I want to move forward with. Okay, so it's um, the, today. The total base bid, which includes <laughs> a total bid, which includes yes. base bid plus the alternates for yes. 12 million six hundred twenty five five thirty two that's correct okay i will second that for discussion dave did you have any um questions on this no um you know it's just that you know we have to let you know the town understand that we still think we're going to be able to keep within the 19 million it's just that mm -hmm. we're spending more on this phase than what we planned on correct yes, yes. and just to kind of well, because we're including more too. We decided yeah. to put all the alternates in yeah. because right. um, I mean it doesn't make sense to put put it off for a year or two and then cost us, you know, so much more money. Right. And I can make this, you know, this slide available. You know, Jeff, uh, Finance Committee, anybody needs this. This is kind of our cash flow that we're looking at for the construction of the project. Uh, we always need contingency. Um, which is at 11% because USDA, I mean, sometimes you can get away with a 5% contingency, but in this, in this realm, in this market right now, um, USDA is recommending the, the 11%. Um, and then you, you know, your, your legal fees and bond council fees, your engineering. Um, and so this is cash flow, uh, cumulative cash flow. And then just, um, you know, we, we will have our, our contribution, which we had to put up was 250,000. And then we have, you know, other loans. So Barb, Barb will be structuring um, a loan and wrapping in some other stuff into a ban. So we'll, we'll carry these projects for bans for a little while. And then once, once the project's complete, we will close the loan with USDA. Um, so we spend our money first, then the loan, and then the grant, which is on this side over here on the bottom. You know, this is grant money when, they get, when, when you get to the end of the project. Um, that money comes directly as a as form of a grant versus the loan. So um, all of that paperwork will get redone. We have a new application to go in because this loan amount is changing with um, USDA. So we'll actually have the first loan and then we'll have a second loan for the additional 2.2. It does get a little confusing for the public, but <laughs> for all of us as we go through these meetings, but um, all of that paperwork will be happening behind the scenes to get that stuff squared away. Okay, I, I think I right saw the, the best um, is, is Dave, Barbara, you were saying the best the cost of borrowing right now is about the best we're going to see. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I thought I saw Barbara Hancock on earlier, but um, Anna Lee, go ahead. Yes, I just have a question. If we did sure. get um, bids from minority contractors and how those came in. Yes, well, we only got two bids, and then so sub bids because it's a USDA project, the government projects that they, there have to be the the um, sub bids that go through to the main uh, contractor, uh, Waterline and RH White would have to be available per, per all you know U.S. government projects and funded projects have to be, you know, um, oh, there, I think there's there's options for low income and minority uh, contractors to bid on those projects. So they follow all the USDA guidelines and, and federal government guidelines as far as any project. So I couldn't answer specifically how those bids came in or who bid, it on, who bid on them. Because really all, the only thing we see, we saw five sub bids and those were for our alternates. And then we, um, and then all those other bids kind of funnel through to the main contractor and that main contractor just gives us a lump sum number. We don't see you know, all the different projects, other than the alternates that we asked for originally. It would be nice if we could uh, at some point see those yeah, sub bids. Sure. That I'm, 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 sure I'm sure they would. They could share that as we go down the road. That'd be nice. The bid tabulation is available from the engineering company, Emily. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. Somebody knows, you. knows procurement. <laughs> Barbara, did you have any comments that you wanted to make on the... Um, uh, on the financing or anything because you were been so great to, to stick around all night here yes i have a voter registration tonight too so i'm double duty oh oh <laughs> but um feel so guilty yeah don't feel guilty i'm, I'm here anyway <laughs> uh we had a great meeting this afternoon and and we'll just work through um with jennifer from usda on whatever they need to um to get the new figures worked out my understanding is they're going to get a ton more money. So um, yeah, 
through regular channels. So I'm hoping that the our, our proportion of did they talk about our proportion of grant going up? At well, all? oh, I don't think so. Not, not on this project because it would be the same. But on um, you know, if we, we look to apply for that pipe project and with a letter for, with a letter from um, DEP, if we ask for that. Uh, you know, helping us kind of forcing our hand to do the work, we have to commit to it, um, would uh, that that would help us. And it really has to do with your, you know, uh, the wealth of your community, other other factors like that. But there's not a, I don't think there's, um, because they have more money, they don't give more money. At least that's what I didn't hear from Jennifer today. But uh, mm -hmm. But you'd think it would work like that, but well, not so much. It sounded like I, I'm not, I was in a meeting on Monday, and it sounded like um, you know the you uh, you know the ag department, Department of mm -hmm. Agriculture, is going to get a huge amount of money for sure. programs and infrastructure, and and separate from the infrastructure bill that's going through Congress, it's going to be appropriated under under the normal budget, and um, so they're encouraging all these huge efforts. So yeah. I think we can show, I mean, I mean, we should, when we sent that letter to McGovern, I mean, it was 65 million bucks. Yeah. So, it's I a mean, lot of money. you know, divided <laughs> over 5,000 people, even if it's the entire town, that's a, <laughs> this is a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money, a lot yeah. of expense. So I'm hoping that yes. we, you know, we just we have do. to keep, we have to keep hustling on this. So yep. anyway. And knocking on every door. Yep. Yep. Um, so is there any more discussion or questions from anybody? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Okay, Casey. Thank you. You got everything on that? All right, next item on the agenda is the library adult circulation revised job description approval. Um, that actually was approved by the personnel committee. Casey, would you like to address that? I try to pull it up. And now we figure out if Casey knows how to share screen or not. <laughs> Hold your breath, it might happen. Um, you want me to do it? Let me know. <gasps> Did it work? Hey. Yes. I don't do it as often as everyone else does. So essentially, blow it up a little bit for us old people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the recommendation that we got. We had a conversation. Candace has a retirement. And as I mentioned last week, and she had asked to speak to the personnel board because she needs to hire for the position, but she noted that there's some job description or some job functions that have slightly changed with personnel. Personnel didn't necessarily object to it being in the old format. But after I talked to our consultant who's working on the compensation study, um, I had suggested that perhaps we put it into the new format just so it's consistent moving forward. So that's what Mary Cardi did, but she also sent us a recommendation and basically outlined the differences here. So what I'm showing you is her recommendation letter and I'll scroll past my name so you can see the, the meat of the letter here. So they conducted, they're in the midst of conducting our comprehensive classification and compensation, compensation plan. And so the bylaws, I had advised Mary and Candace that the bylaws preclude a hire unless the position exists in the compensation plan as approved by town meeting. So they went back and reviewed their, their questionnaires and discuss this with Candace, discuss the changes with Candace. And what they're telling us is they're recommending changes to two titles as we move forward. Two of the library assistant positions have expanded to incorporate technical and marketing functions above and beyond the duties contained in the existing descriptions. As such, it is recommended a position titled circulation and technical services assistant be created to reflect the more complex duties of technical services and marketing. It's also recommended the position currently titled adult circulation head be changed to adult services associate to better represent the complexity and scope of the position. And so 
what she's saying is, is consider changing the title, but for purposes of what Candace needs to do right now is utilize the new format, which is easier to read. And I'll scroll to that in a second, but consider changing that position title as we go into FY22 or however we deal with the report on the compensation study, which should be available relatively soon. So what you'll see here is essentially a streamlined version of what our old job descriptions look like. The definition of what the position does is right up top. And then you see the essential functions because it really draws people's attention when they first look at a job, when they're looking at, at a vacancy as to what they might be considered, what, what they could be considered doing. So late in the day today, Candace asked me a question about two items that she had that she had actually wanted to put in when we first started talking about this. And I was looking through it and looking back at her emails and her old job description. And I see one thing, and I think there's a little bit of description missing and provide circulation and reference services. So the two things that really came up for Candace, as I understand it, and Candace is at another meeting, so she can't attend tonight. Otherwise I would have her explain the whole thing. But essentially the adult programming and sort of programming in itself and the circulation functions that have changed. Circulation isn't just handing out books anymore. Circulation comes with a lot more in-depth duties. And that was really what Candace brought to our attention. So the request to the board is to approve this. And again, you'll see we've moved supervision received, judgment. Those things are all considered those are part of the FLSA standard and they're considered necessary. And each employee in different positions um, will have different functions and different, I'm trying to find the word that's escaping me right now. Things, sling, things will slightly change depending on the position. In this case, this is trying to capture some of those changes that Mary identified after her discussions with, and I'm sorry if it makes people, sometimes my stomach bottoms out when I see people scroll like this, I apologize. But essentially what, what Mary's saying is, we need to hire for it, let's address some of the issues in it. But from Candace's perspective, there was one item she wanted to add, <clears throat> and it was around the provide circulation and reference services. And actually I was trying to find in the in a period of about a minute, find another, find the comparison of the two positions. Personnel has approved this based on the old format. They didn't realize that Mary and I would think it would need to be adjusted for the new format because we're looking forward and we realize Candace needs to hire and she needs to have a job description. So I would ask that the board approve this. And the function that Candace was concerned about, I've asked her to put into the vacancy notice and she can address that throughout her interview process because it will reference the need that she has. So this will because not- Because if we sit and wait on it too much longer, she won't be able to hire in May, which is when she wants to. Okay, uh, I guess my only question is, this is okay. Um, for our comp schedule though. That was part of the reason I had Mary look at this because what she did was she took a look at the changes in the need that Candace identified and is fitting it into the compensation study. Okay, all right. That that's why good. they're suggesting two changes because they see how it fits in the study or that's mm -hmm. why Mary's suggesting two changes. All right, sounds good, okay. Um, I may, I will entertain a motion to approve this. I'll make the motion to approve the new job description for the, uh, for the library. Um, just took it down so I can't say oh. the exact title again. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I'll second Trevor McDaniel. Um, is there any further discussion on this? So no. it will be ready for our comp schedule, I guess. Oh, oh, oh it's a uh, adult services. Adult services. Associate. Well, 
so what we have to do, because we don't have a new comp schedule, she wants to hire in May. What we have to do is she needs to put this out with the current title. And in the, as we transition into FY22, we need to hopefully with the new compensation, we're still working on that, but we need to transition this title as we transition into the new compensation plan. Friendly so amendment, right now, Dave, friendly amendment, Dave, that we yeah. approve adult circulation head with the idea that adult service associate would be the compensation plan title. Yes. Yep. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor? Dave I, Wolfram. Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you very much, Casey. I just want to thank you for trying to be as proactive as possible. I don't want to keep going back and trying to fix these things. Um, well, I'm going to tell the personnel board on the 26th that we, I'll send them out the note tomorrow, but I'll tell them that you had asked, that we had discussed this and Mary and I felt like it needed to change just so we could move forward uniformly. Yeah. And because we've captured what, with the exception of that one item, I think we've captured what she needs. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Eversource EV charging station agreement for approval. Um, so go ahead. This is if you recall last fall, we had approved this and then we found out that Eversource had run out of money in their grant process. Right. So this, <clears throat> this agreement is the site host agreement plus the legal wrapper. And the legal wrapper actually refers back to conditions that the state requires, DPU actually requires that are notif the people are notified about. So some items, rates and stuff are things that Eversource doesn't control to some extent and some references. So the legal wrapper is, it's the new thing. The site host agreement the board had actually approved last fall, but now that we have an additional document, I wanted the board to address this. So if you recall, we asked to be put on their wait list to when they had new funding to do the infrastructure installation for the EV charging system that will actually be paid for out of the green communities grant. Mm -hmm. And once their additional funding was released, they provided us with information that Kevin and I had to review and sign off on in terms of the plans that had been drawn up a while before. And so this is the last piece of that. And we had sent a letter, I'm sorry, let me backtrack one minute. We had sent a letter stating, we wanna be able to, to contract with you once you have money. So now that Kevin's reviewed the plans, I talked to Tim Simons at Eversource and this is the last piece. So if the board would approve the contract and authorize a signatory on it, we can get this process moving has to and i just wanted to explain that the legal wrapper actually refers back to the contract and clarifies some questions about terms take a motion to approve the eversource ev charging station agreement As Dave presented. Will second it. is there any further discussion i know we've yes. talked about it over and over but yes okay um all those in favor i trevor mcdaniel i dave wolfram i carolyn ness thank you casey uh, Carolyn, can I interrupt real quick? Um, sure. uh, Barb, was, do you, did you want to address? Because I know you're probably wanting to shoot home. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Barbara. We can go right down to the Oh, loan. for the loan document. So just in case yeah. we have a question. Yeah. Yeah. That's what maybe we could jump forward to that. Yes. We absolutely can jump forward. I'm sorry about that. No, no I didn't realize that it was now. already 8 o'clock. Yes. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Barbara. Oh, sure. If you'd like to. Yeah. I didn't know if it would cause no, feedback. Fine. I can hear myself though. Um, <laughs> so I have before you um, uh, the ban rollover for the natural New England natural bakers property uh, that went out to bid yesterday. And it came in with an amazing rate beating our last amazing rate <laughs> of uh, 0.39. So uh, <laughs> I know, right? That's why we crazy. need to. It's awesome. 0.39. I mean, I think it's like $1,200 in interest for the year. Um, yeah. 
I did cut it short a little so that it'll expire with the school roof next year so that we won't have these two, three yep. weeks apart, but maybe we won't own it by then. Maybe right. we'll sell it before then. So, um, so I have before you the um, loan documents to sign so I can send them off to DOR for approval and, and be prepared to pay off the old loan and take out the new loan. We didn't pay anything down. We just rolled it over. Okay. Um, yep. Barbara, um, yeah. all three of us sign, is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then yep. If you have it in the office, then we'll come in tomorrow and do it. Absolutely. Okay. That'll be perfect. Yep. Just all like right. the school roof, actually, Greenfield Co-op has been um, a great, aggressive uh, lender to us. Awesome. And, and they've secured this loan as well um, as the last couple over the years in the school roof loan as well. So. Uh, thank you, Greenfield Co-op. <laughs> yes, um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Okay, so this. I'll, um, I would make a motion to um, approve and sign the loan documents for the band, right, mm -hmm. for um, the New England Natural Bakers property, which is the old pickle factory property that we now own. We yep. got to get a new name for that. <laughs> Hopefully, a new business name coming pretty soon. <laughs> Town <laughs> garage neighbor. <laughs> right, garage neighbor, pilot neighbors. Um, Great. So, did I hear a second? I'm sorry, I had the volume down because yeah. we're both in the same room. Yeah. Dave, Dave welcome. Second it. All right. Thank you, Dave. All right. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Barbara. You very much. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Great job. Good night. Great job. Um, Thanks. Oxford Pickle um, Property RFP. Casey, how are we doing on this? Are we ready? <laughs> Casey's not doing very well. No. He's had five meetings. We have some things going on in the office. Yeah. This is on my list of things to complete we in know. the next two weeks, but I need to tell you that it is very difficult. There's been quite a bit of activity in the office right now. And this require this is one of those things that requires concentration. And yeah. so despite the fact. Best. Uh, despite the fact that I would like to be able to to do everything, it's been a little bit difficult to focus on this because we have been we've had several meetings on wastewater, mm -hmm. we've had meetings about several other items, some of which I can't talk about, but yeah, things can. that literally tree boxes. I had a meeting this this afternoon about tree boxes, so we're making some progress on other fronts. This is just one of the fronts that isn't making as much progress as I'd like, so I apologize. Nope, okay, that's we fine. Know. Let's we just know kick, kick it to um, next week's agenda. Yeah. And hopefully we can do just a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. We just keep plugging away till we get it done. So yeah, we, we got to so get much. it out. Are we, or are we not getting an appraisal on the property? Well, that, you know, I've been struggling with this, right? Uh, Dave, I would take your advice. I, you know, at first I was like, yes, we need an appraisal. And then I was like, no, we don't need one. And then I've been kind of, I'm waffling because I feel like if we could get a, um, put out an RFP for what is owed on the property or somewhere around there, we could, we could float it that way, or we could go get an appraisal and take our chances as to where it comes in. I don't, I'm not really sure. I what thought I was under the understanding we couldn't do an RFP for what's owed on the property. We have to, you, have can't. It. you can't, it has to be a market value, an acceptable market valuation of some sort. So either the assessor's records or an appraisal. Well, it has I to be an acceptable function. Well, what did we do with pilot? That that was neither. I don't think that was an agreement. I have deal. no idea. I wasn't here for pilot, so I don't know. Anyways, I haven't seen the well. Let's the look into documents that and find out. You know what what we can do, and if we need an appraisal, you know, I guess. Well, we got to move on this. I, yeah. I mean, you know, we have yeah. a lot of interest, and and it would be just you know cash in our pocket and yeah. And it's lovely mostly. to have a 0.39, you know, loan amount, which is, you know, hardly anything, but yeah, we still want economic development. Yeah. We still want, we want taxes and we want, so let's, and let's get our money back from the loan. So let's just get a solid answer on if we have to have an appraisal or not. And then just, we'll have to just deal with whatever that price comes in at. I, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I just assumed you could sell the property for what the town wants for it. Why not? Procurement laws require that it be a certain measurable standard. 
And it's got to be an acceptable state measurable standard. So either an appraisal or a reference to the assessor's records. Mm. Or, well, uh, of some value. I, I think we have a little bit more leeway yes, in that. I but do too. We, the idea is not to, you can't do shady deals. No, of course not. Of course not. No, but, but you have to actually give, some, there has to be a measurable standard is the way I understand it. I, I have a note though. We could figure right, that out. Thanks. Yeah, let's figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is still in the works, community social worker position. And I, I also want to add the community services coordinator because there's two separate positions here that are going to address two separate levels of social work in the community. Um, I think one of the things that I want to um, just address is that, um, and, and I think this will be again covered under our COVID money, um, one in three COVID sufferer survivor, su survivors of COVID um, end up with neurological or mental disorders within six months. 7% um, have strokes, 2% have dementia, 17% have depression, and 14% have mood disorders. So this is huge, huge issues here. And, um, and, and certain people in the community have raised issues as well that have made compelling arguments. So I think what we're coming down to is we have two levels of community um, social workers. We have the really high end, which I wanna make sure that Casey is working on um, that's part-time that would work with our police officers. And this is, would do interventions. We have about 30 section 12s a year, which are interventions. Um, this position, hopefully we could sustain it through um, billing through the health insurance. Um, it's a little bit more complicated because it's, um, there's more liability involved. We're still working on this, but it looks like we can bill through the community um, support options in um, Greenfield. Uh, they're out of Northampton, but they have a Greenfield office. And um, so we're working on that. Mary McCarty did review this. And then the other position is more low level. Uh, we have an outreach coordinator um, under a SIG grant at the Frontier Senior Center right now. We have not been able to verify. I, Christina, I see you're on. Did, have you been able to verify that SIG grant for this coming year? Yes. And the, um, but it's because after this coming year, um, it's going to become competitive. I just got informed of this yesterday. Um, which means it's going to be, um, I mean, the little information they gave, it sounds like it's going to be a lot harder to count on the money, um, at least with our current senior center, because let's face it, we don't, we can't offer a lot of things that across the state other centers can and things like that. And if it's competitive, uh, I, I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but, if, I'm, but realistic. So yes, there is a SIG for, there is SIG money for FY22 and then FY, starting in FY23, um, they're changing the whole way they do it. Okay, so my idea on that is hopefully we can pursue it the following year uh, as a grant, but this would to ex expand the, so instead of just being an outreach kind of person, this would be a community services coordinator would be available for all age groups, not just the senior center age groups. And it would be a referral person, a lower level person to help people connect with, you know, in the community and have some um, ability to, to work um, at a lower level, um, but would be more effective connecting people with programs. So we would add some hours to the SIG grant this year with the idea that we're gonna expand it, um, you know, and go after the money uh, for the following year. So I don't know, you included the paperwork in our packets, Casey. So I don't know if, if Trevor and Dave had both had an opportunity to look at this. The idea is this will have, it will be under the Board of Health 
It will have no impact on our budget, at least for this year. And the intention is to have it not at all in the future either, um, because we're going to um, hopefully use some COVID money, whether it's from the CARES Act this year or this new OPRA op um, money. Of op yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's coming. all acronyms, Carolyn. Yes, that's coming. We'll we'll start with that, and then um, and it's and we'll be billing at the same time under health insurance. So we're going to be building a pot of money, and the idea is I'm not sure how we're going to do it accounting wise, because uh, we we can't set up a revolving fund that's part of the. Well, we need to set up some kind of, I got to meet with Brenda and figure out some of accounting so that we have a pool of money that will pay for the hours as we move forward. Um, but I think this will be sustainable through billing um, and grant money. And I'm hoping that it will have no impact on our budget. I realize we have serious issues this year. Um, so I, I, I can say that it will be neutral this year. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to figure it out. Um, I'm meeting with Community Health Center um, Director, uh, you know, talking to her tomorrow, and we're going to figure out how other options are, how this is connecting. We got to overlay everything, and we're going to connect everything so it it is seamless. So if a person, depending on the level of of their issues, you have availability of several different programs and it will be across the whole community, not just isolated sectors. Um, because I think people are, are, are really overwhelmed. Um, and, and we talked about COVID survivors having these issues, but I think the pandemic had left people with a lot of other mental issues as well and uh, mental health issues. And we need to address this. Um, and I feel very strongly that we have the ability if we just continue to be creative. And I think we've solved some of it and it's just putting the puzzle together. So if you guys would look at the Acton, Town of Acton Community Services Coordinator, and then look at what um, the work has been done on the editing of the um, social worker, the community social worker. Um, yeah. I really appreciate it for next week because we need to get this in to the compensation schedule. Um, so, yes, Christina. I'm sorry. I keep thinking you're possible. I just wanted to um, clarify. First of all, I think that position, that sounds great. Um, however, does that mean we are not getting a third person into the senior center? Because that's how we pay them right now is with the SIG grant. Uh, yes. No, we're trying to post this. We're trying to fix it up so it can be posted because right now it's, it's empty. The job. Right. But I'm just clarifying. But you're saying this person wouldn't just be doing outreach for, for seniors. So would she be a... Um, at least the senior center outreach coordinator, um, a lot of what was done was actually help with things that, you know, I don't have time to do or Sue doesn't have time to do. So it's not purely like uh, it was a 12 hour a week most recently position. It wasn't like purely outreach. Um, so I, I'm just trying to make it clear that it's kind of that sounds like we will still be down a person. We are going to post the job for additional hours up to 19 hours, I'm hoping. And those additional hours will be available for other members of the community. And what you had had that person do, they will continue to do, but it will be an upgraded mm -hmm. um, job with more skills and, and job um, qualifications. So, um, people yeah, I think that sounds great. I just wanted to clarify help. that. I, I think we were needful of real help and, you know, people are yes in pretty rough shape. So the idea is to, you know, connect them with programs. And so there would be more, a, a more knowledgeable upgraded person 
available yes. to the senior center, as well as the community on the whole. And then we have a separate person for people that are in crisis. And the person mm -hmm. in crisis works with the person that you know, in cases of referrals back and forth. The idea is to cover everybody and their needs across the board and try to adjust depending on how, what the seriousness of the situation is and that there's communication, cross communication and multiple people are involved so that, you know, uh, we all have the best services available to us in the community. Cause I think, I mean, you just don't even know what to do. And the reason why the police get so many calls is because they're the only agency that we have that's 24 seven and they, you know, are always available and helpful and, and, and certainly concerned. And so, I mean, we need to do something in between. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that Trevor and Dave, that you'll look at this and we can have some more discussion on it next week. I will have some more information. I'm not trying to add additional costs to the budget. I think this can be done outside our budget um, once we get started. I'll, I'll look further for sure and read. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. Yep, I, I think this is, I, I'm in my mind, I'm visualizing a much better, more robust services at the senior center, more medium, available services for people just to call and get some help. And then you have well, crisis services. So the well, that's exactly what I've been, I mean, at least the senior center part, that's exactly what I've been thinking too, that we need somebody, um, you know, like you said, the word you use more robust skills because there are people that call our center and yeah, we can provide them to other numbers to different things and some, websites and, and, and such but really you know i'm not a social worker sue's not a social worker you know it it, it would be great to have someone that had th that level of you know experience so thank you yep and our any of our housing issues have been mental health issues too so i i think um it will reduce our court fees and court costs hopefully as well um down the line. So anyway, um, moving on. Casey, your report and update. Okay. So today we had, I had several meetings, but one of the, so as Trevor talked about, we had a financial discussion with Jennifer Shero and a bunch of other people, D DPC, Brenda and Barb. So we're chasing some of the outliers in terms of the financing and stuff. I also had a walk, I call it walkabout, um, on the tree box filters today with Chris Curtis, Armand Nunes, uh, EBI, two representatives from EBI, Kevin and I. And we, what we did was we identified some, some places we could look at to, for tree box filters. We are gonna to have to have conversations. So Chris and I are gonna to talk tomorrow or Friday. We are tomorrow, tomorrow or Thursday because we have to set up a, some sort of a plan to talk to the property owners about where we might be able to restructure this. I missed the part of the meeting that actually was over at the elementary school because I had a meeting go long that I couldn't leave. So I just want everybody to know that it's in hand. We're, we're working on modifying our plan and we'll have a little more information in a few days. I was, able to, I was able to attend that um, meeting in, yes. instead of, uh, of Casey because I know she was at another meeting. So um, it was good. We got a chance to talk to a landscape architect. Um, uh, Darius was there, Tina was there, Bill Hilters was there, um, and um, EBI was there. So we walked, we, we discussed kind of the needs that we need in front of that, uh, in front of the school to be welcoming, to be safe, to be, you know, whimsical for the kids and uh, easy to maintain, you know, a lot of different issues with salt, um, you know, the planting. So it's just all kinds of things to kind of work out how we're going to maintain that. Right now it's a sea of asphalt. So you throw salt down and you drop a plow whether it's a loader or whatever, but that will change when we deal with the water and the uh, rain garden. So 
and we've got to manage that around. But we had had a good conversation with a landscape architect, so I think we'll come up with a decent plan. We'll have a couple of things to look at, and then we'll refine that back down. We also looked at the rain garden that we put in or the swale that we put in on the side to try and um, rehab that to make sure it works a little bit better and we're not kind of yes. pumping all the, you know, floating all the mulch down in the hole and filling it up and we get rid of the bag. And so there's some work there. And then we looked at the um, rain garden out in the parking lot that um, needed to be rehabbed again because of the, that's a plow damage and just, it wasn't functioning well. So we're working on that as well. So it was a good meeting to kind of walk through those projects while Casey was on a bunch of other walkabouts. <laughs> yes, we were doing that. And so Kevin and I had a good conversation on our walkabout, which was mostly the center of town. And I think we'll have some good solutions, but we do need, Chris and I need to, to sit down and talk. So that in terms of that particular item, it's, I think we're moving forward positively. Um, some of the other things that we've had. Did you feel comfortable with the EBI, both of you? I did. I did. Really? So there was, so I was, the I was impressed near... with the energy that they brought to the conversation. Okay. Cause I mean, they had rec good recommendations and it was, I mean, I've, understand the guy died but honestly we, we yeah david they put together a different management team so i'm much more confident of it having yeah. met with them you know actually been outside and looked at things so we're going to have some options that we'll bring up can you let the mvp program people know andrew know i think chris is going to do that because but i'll ask him because we have to would talk you, would you would you follow up on that because it's this is really critical i mean we've had two screw up engineer i mean uh, construction firms here um i mean the, you know kelleher drive and then this ebi stuff and so we need to have some follow-up okay please okay and so the other thing that i need everybody to know is we've we're trying to keep our heads above water with meetings but right now meetings have taken over the world if I don't know if you've looked at your schedule lately, but you have multiple meetings in a week and a half in one night. And it's it's becoming critical that some of our, our the daily work in the office still has to get done. And this meeting prep is one of those things. I think I think Jennifer would agree with me. It takes us three or four times the amount of time to actually schedule meetings and put them together. And I think Julie was upset. I actually, Trevor and I tried to deal with the finance committee thing and I had to get on late because I was late leaving the office this afternoon. I unfortunately can't do meetings in my office without certain set computer setup that I can't use here, that I can't use. It, it's just, a pro my computer's a problem at work. But one of the things that we've discovered is with so much activity and so much project oversight going on, it's difficult for us to, to really be as productive as we want to be. And the amount of work it takes to deal with, even we're still in COVID and it looks like we're going to need to be careful for the next several months, but there's a lot of work that goes into dealing with these meetings. And I think everyone not everybody sees how much work Jennifer does to manage this schedule with two accounts. I mean, there's a point where I think we probably will need a, a third one if it takes this, if it takes this much scrambling to make sure that people, cause we're meeting four nights a week. I know, and I know. Casey, we know. It, it's, it's really so difficult. I'm just, all, all of us what I want people to understand is this is difficult to deal with. It's, we thought it was bad in the beginning, but this it seems brutal. to, it's brutal. The mm -hmm. amount of time and and different different the, functions that have to be pulled the, into just this meeting, these, these meetings. Are all massive projects. And they're massive. We have massive I mean, projects in our office. I was writing the um, annual town uh, select board report last night. Do you night. have that, by the way? Did yes, you forward me? I, I did. Uh, so I did that. There is There's, a printout in your box. There is oh, okay. October and November that's still left, to, or, or November and December that we still need to flush out. And then I want you guys to proof it and adjust it. But I just got the the, bit, the body of the text out. But as I was writing that, um, it, it's really amazing. And, and I, when we, at our school committee meeting, we signed off on all the 
minutes of the of our joint meetings from the last year and it really brings into focus the immense work that this staff does that Jennifer and Casey does that you know that Darius and their team did for the schools that we're doing on our end here I don't think the public has any idea how much uh, work goes into this I mean even just one meeting and the packets that are 50 pages thick two-sided printed that um, and these are heard not me crying. simple things. They're really not. They're all really complex in, in any other year. And I've been here for four, I don't know, four or five years now, but um, any other year would be really complex on their own, but they're happening like one on top of the other on top of the other. And they, they require a lot of mind bandwidth to, to understand yes. what they are and make important decisions that are long lasting that affect budget and uh, scope and people's jobs and their lives. And so it, it's really hard for our staff to really do a great job when we're working on 40 things at one time. It, it's, you just, you don't get the quality of work. We're bonding, we guys. We're bonding 24 <laughs> seven. We are bonded. Unfortunately. No <laughs> but I That's feel true. like we, we see each other a lot. <laughs> we do have to find a way to uh, slim down the amount of work we're doing we need to focus because we need to focus everything is important it all needs to happen but it it literally this can't year, unless we add two more town administrators there's no way we can get it all done with the quality Trevor, we did Trevor, this, yeah. this this time of year is always off it is because it's budget but uh, you know one thing that we just have to realize we just have to do the best we can right and and, and it is going to get better I mean, I really do feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, um, but I, everybody is working really hard. They I'm are. So appreciative of it. All and of us. Hours and we're, you know, all of us. I mean, yeah. honestly, uh, there's more, more FaceTime than, than, I mean, my, I don't even see my husband. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I you guys more. Yep. <laughs> He's on Zoom all the time. So I just, all the employees at town working for the residents as I was writing I that report, I just grew more appreciative each I paragraph I wrote with thinking of all the things that Dick Kalaszewski has done, that Jennifer's done, yes. that Barbara and Brenda have done, and everybody uh I don't Kevin leave and out John and Kevin everybody. And John and like I mean Adam and just everybody has pulled together this past year. It, it's awe-inspiring and it's just i don't want to lose anyone's mental <laughs> stability the bandwidth we were talking about difficult. social workers <laughs> yeah right we all we need a resident one just for our staff listen yes we're we're, we're gonna <laughs> take a break some yeah. yeah. um, for the office yeah Yep. Jennifer wants a therapy dog. She's yes, picked out the therapy right. dog she wants to. Ooh, you just have to wrestle idea. it away from Miss. From... <laughs> okay. I bring him in a couple times a week. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, all right. So listen, this was a really productive meeting. I know this was an off week. I'm I'm really thrilled that everybody was able to show up. Um, so this makes it a little bit less um then for next week and yeah. um we need to start really checking things off here and some of this stuff will drop off by the end of the month so if we can just focus on a couple things get ready for town meeting um i really appreciate it so casey is there anything more yes i was okay. going to let you know i've started putting the warrant together i'm going to send it off to dan because he yep. needs to see how it's shaping up. Okay. And if you recall, Dan, Dan would like to be involved in the earlier iterations of what's going on. So I'm going to send it off to him and ask him to sit down with the board and discuss times, but he needs to see the framework of what we've got. Because as you know, we'll have several zoning articles. Mm -hmm. We have the budget, we have capital, whatever that turns out to be. Um, but we also will have at least two general bylaw changes because some things have changed on the state level that we need to address. And there's, so there's things in the, in the works that we'll need to take into account. You may see a draft when I send this to Dan, 
but it mm -hmm. will be whatever it is is going to be very very rough that's fine and we know it and takes the yeah. other thing is is i finally found some so in my copious not spare time um i am going to help the personnel board with a question that they had come up with that i finally found an answer for in another situation it just popped in so i'm hoping to get personnel moving on something something else once we get through classification compensation study because we should have some we should have a draft report in the next i would say by the 20 what is it the 20 what's the friday before the personnel board's meeting jennifer the 21st well, no, 22nd 23rd. 23rd so i'm hoping we'll have if we'll have some some better data for the from Mary so we can present to the personnel board um, some more concrete information. As you know, I invited you all to go to the personnel board meeting on the 26th at five. So it's in, um, I just mentioned it to Trevor before I left this afternoon. Okay. Because I know you have a planning board meeting on the 26th at seven. So I, have, I had mentioned um, that. I have a round table um, public health meeting at four and um, I think we were, did anyone sign up for Joe Cumberford's uh, town hall? I couldn't sign up, my, my, I couldn't get it to work. Um, but I don't know, maybe one of, I, I think going to personnel is probably more important. We may have to discuss um, some of the implications of classification compensation. And I would like you to at least have an idea of what Mary is going to present to you. So if I've I've also scheduled Mary to come in, in okay, let's let's do that. May um, all right. You'll send us a link because I don't um, just a, a link reminder. We yes, we will send you a reminder. But I'm hoping to be able to send you some some information to review before that meeting. So, so can I just okay. make? Um, people are getting a little confused about the postings that are on the calendar. Uh, it's because a shock. there's a quorum. And so it looks like there's a select board personnel planning board. And it's only because the select board is going to the planning board meeting and to the personnel board meeting. Right. So, you know, you see a lot of data. I just am, I just want to put it out there. Please open up the attachment and look at the agenda. Yes. And see how it correlates. And we have to, we have, when more than one of us show up to a meeting, we have to post or, or Correct. make any comment, or we have to limit our comments to just personal remarks. So, um, Thank you. Yeah. and so that's why it looks a little confusing to folks. We understand that too, but for us, we have to make sure that we're doing the best we can to comply with open meeting law for you folks. And so you've got two different times for two different meetings. So instead of trying to overlap the two of them, it makes more sense to provide the link information separately through separate connections okay. and separate agendas. So um, before you go, Casey, can we just go over um, next week we have um, the 20th, is the we have a joint meeting with the finance committee. We have been going. You're gonna. We have it. been going. Yes. So you're posting that. The you're right. It is the twentieth. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Yep. No. Just make sure we're posted. Um, then the twenty-first, you um, have the library. That's your meeting. regular meeting day. Yep. Yep. Um, and then uh, you get us posted for the personnel and the planning board on the twenty-sixth, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So Jennifer, don't let me forget the 20th. Well, it's just that the finance committee would want to will want to know about the yes. police budget. And um, I, I think we have I think to they're also going to want to talk about the capital budget with you as well. Yes. And I, I think we have to go ahead with the police budget because we have our meeting was um, canceled. They're supposed to be working on something, but we have no concrete information um, from our legislative delegation on what they're going to do to fix Correct. this. So I think we have to, we have no choice, but to go ahead at least um, we can moderate, we can always come down, but I think at the, 
level services we've got to this is a level service budget based on the police reform thing thus we'll have yes. to approve it i think um because i don't um, have any further information unless we find i'll i can i'll track down jonathan edwards have you heard anything trevor you haven't heard anything oh uh, he called i think the other day i had a missed call but i didn't get a chance to call back yet so i haven't i haven't spoken with him all right know. Are you, we, can you just ask him what the heck we're doing? What, I mean, the yeah. meeting was canceled, so. I think he was they, waiting because something was going on. They were on waiting for more information. But yeah, okay. I'll yeah. find out if he we has to, We have to sort it out. I mean, if we're gonna make intelligent decisions on our budget. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We can't wait till the last minute. No, I know. So I just want to make sure that John's aware of that if you think if this is going to be a discussion item that you think is going to come up, I want to make sure that John's aware of it. Yeah, well, I, I can't imagine the finance committee is not going to want to talk about it, basically. Oh, they will. I'm sure they will. And they may have some questions about capital. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that I'm, discussion I'm that will probably capital. need to happen. I, I, I'm fine with it. I just want Trevor and Dave to look at it. I think we have we we can do some we can certainly do the small school projects and then we just really what are the things that we actually have to have to do and then we right. just do those things that are um health and safety like the police systems we're you know we're not going to be able to use the cell right. unless we have it fixed it's not going to pass inspection so we already know we have to fix it but we should be fixing it because it's not healthy for our officers either mm -hmm. And um, and it and and good it, for the building, yeah. Right, the whole building and and our energy usage and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing freezes up all the time, and it's constantly being you know adjusted and fiddled with. So it makes no sense not to take care of that. Um, but you know, some things that we just let go, you know, until yeah. next year. We want Maybe. to, yeah. I I think that was why Capital wanted to prioritize that those things. Yeah, that's and good. The issue is, is in some cases, if we don't have a funding source, it's hard to really define what you're going to do. So there may be points where we just have to drop things or right. figure out a different way to do that. Like, like Kevin mm -hmm. suggested, we do a lease right. for the equipment he needs. That's a workaround. Yeah. Um, well, but I, just I do think we've got to address a few things and I need to, we need to talk to Brenda. So that'll be a good thing. I asked Brenda to come tonight because I wasn't sure how much discussion we would have about that. So maybe by next week, we'll have a little more idea after the finance committee meeting about how to structure things. Uh, and the only other thing I just want to throw out, I really, that feasibility study, I mean, we got to have more information to make any decisions on our buildings. And, and so I feel like the feas feasibility study should be funded anyway, even if it's, we can't afford it, we, we can't afford not to do it because we don't want to make, we're trying to make decisions for 50 more years out and we don't want to make poor decisions, so. And if we wait too long, we could be in a place where it's very expensive to do anything to the building. Mm -hmm. No decision is a decision. Or what build, Sorry. whatever building yeah. version that looks like. Well, I want to make sure we're looking at the steeple too and make sure we don't cause more damage on the steeple and stuff like that. So um, we'll have to have some more in, uh, review. And of so that. John, we, we actually, John did a great job of, of working with capital on that one. Um, I do think it's, it's a step-by-step -step process and recognizing the fact that it's a, it's a multi-step process could be helpful. I think that was one thing that really capital had to wrap their heads around. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to talk about? Any unanticipated item? Any public comment? Whoa, we're getting out of here. All right. <laughs> it's relatively early. Seven hours later. Trevor and I are tired of meetings. <laughs> oh man. I know it's one Tuesday. meeting after another all day long. I yep. know it's only Tuesday. My eyes are glazing over. Oh my God. But there was really good meetings the last two days. I have to yep. say, um, I mean, a lot of information was happening. So um, is there anything else anyone wanted to bring up? I'll take a motion to adjourn if not. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Thank you all very much. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everybody. Thank Please you so much. Safe. Have a good one.